Hello there everyone, I'm Mr. Mocha Lover, and thank you for joining me here at the start of a new campaign in TNO The Last Days of Europe, in which we're playing as America, led by a certain tricky dick. But if you would like to read about the US of A, please go right ahead as I slowly scroll down. So, I played at the time of this recording in Toolbox Theory in TNO, you're using the update, as Spares Germany. I played as Japan. Now, it's time for us to play as America, and we're going to go down a route that I've not done yet. Um... In which we're going to get some fun times. A route I've not done yet on the channel, so. Um, the goal is to not get an RD elected in 64. So, freedom, my friends, freedom. And, of course, normal, normal stuff right there. I think I've read these quite a few times already. So, if you'd like to read about the focuses, please go right ahead. A lot of the events I've already read so many times over and over and over again at the time of this recording. So, if you want to read about this, please go right ahead. And then, pretty much all the other focuses as well. For right now, for this part of the campaign, since we're at the beginning, unless it's about like civil wars ways we can send volunteers i'm not gonna read it but this seems like we're probably going to read it admiral thomas h moore and the planning staff of the indian ocean command wearily eyed the map splayed across the table the lines and borders outlining the nations of southeast asia from the vast indonesian archipelago to the jungles of indochina yet for the moment all eyes were focused on malaya and the task of supplying the rebels on the peninsula unless the rebels uh can secure a port we can't really do much one of the lieutenants bluntly stated, Thank you, officer, for pointing out the obvious. One commander snapped back, but we're not in the business of the impossible. We are the perch, an old ba Balao, converted for transport duties available. We might be to Shanghai, the sea line from the Atlanta too, another officer replied. It won't be much, but rather than better than nothing. Ceylon ventured a third point at the map. Access to the base of Trincomalee will be a boon for our ability to reach Southeast Asia. That ought to go to the State Department, the commander replied. Don't count on it. How about Mac Air left, command? We could try running C 130s out of the Cocos Islands and use the tankers for fuel the mid midway. I'll have to talk to the Air Force about that more interjected. We're going to have to do a few trial runs first, but agree with the lieutenant until the rebels can get their hands on a port. Our hands are tied. Extend aid to the United Malayan and a Japanese front. Cannot send boots on the ground until they have secured a port. God dang it. Oh, this is not going to go well for us, is it? I forgot about this one. Let's see. Um, wait, we can send volunteers, right? No reason to invade. Um, so this one popped up or immediately, which is good. So as conflict. So if you worry about this, please go ahead. We'll see what we can do. Um, we need some political power. We need some command command power. Also, this is changes as well. The end of the missile crisis. Uh, I think I read this one before as well. We have to, set up men out for now. Eh, for the past couple weeks, the U.S. has been embroiled in a crisis with Japan. Our formal duel in the Pacific Hawaii has been turned into a stage report for Japanese medium-range ballistic missiles, which were discovered by a CIA used to see spy plane not long ago. After a ten standoff between the United States Navy, first fleet and the IJN, Vice President Kennedy approached the Empire with an offer. The U.S. would remove its own MRBMs from Australia in return for the Japanese doing the same in Hawaii. After several rounds of tense negotiations, this offer was accepted despite the urging of the Joint Chiefs, who argued that it was a perfect time to reclaim America's lost territory. The devs prevailed. Today, both sides are removing our missiles. This has been a major diplomatic coup for Rick Kennedy, who has been hailed across the nation as a hero for his actions in the crisis. President Nixon, though, mostly stayed out of the negotiations and has been widely criticized for such. We stayed off the minute for now. Nice. Cool. So, yeah, here's all the stuff. Um, RDs, Yaki's far right, uh, far left, and MVP center, so... I don't know why they call it the far right. I mean, would you would you label yourself as far right or even far left? I don't think you would. If anything, you probably want to. No matter which side you're on, like you you think you would call yourself just like left or right, but whatever. Great ambitions. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I'll definitely not read this one yet. Kenny refocuses his eyes and tries best to keep a smile bright. Not an easy task. Will shake in the hand of a man with a grip of iron and nerves of steel. And certainly made it more difficult with dozens of cameras flash up front, both of them. While the notion of the OFNA to aid a rebellion in the sphere wasn't considered impossible, the particular nature of Malaya was always a tricky deal to get anyone outside of the states involved. As was a uh, last, so the press's cameras flickered in from in front of the VP and Tun Abdul Razak. The pair could finally take a seat and talk over America's involvement in Malaya. Razak was well, speaking before he even sat down, Mr. Kennedy. We both know that the OFN needs a firm position in the Pacific and an ally to lean on should a push comes to shove, and if you just send some more supplies our way. Uh, Kennedy grimaced, of course, and spoke up. We're doing everything we can with our airdrops. We're pushing our luck as it is. So much so, as another gun passes in Malaya, the Javans will catch a win and we'll have a whole new situation on our hands. Tone's eyebrows narrowed and he looked, or locked his fingers together. Nothing you can't handle, though, right? Kennedy smirked and took a sip of water. I'm serious. We both know what your next step is, one way or another. It's a chance to redeem the Kennedy name. It's not like the Nixon is... Or President Nixon is exactly hurting your chance with how he's managed the country and how you handled Japanese before. I'm certain you'll be on the chief's seat in no time. Kenny took a moment to think about Tun's words. Maybe we can give a little more to Malay. I hate seeing anyone's culture ground up to nothing after all, but I don't count on anything more than what you're already getting. I'll run it by Nixon and see what he thinks. Just don't count on it. Also, <clears throat> as you can tell, we have a surplus just because I'm not spending too much on the military as well as social spending for now. Um, obviously, I usually want to max this out, but at the same time, actually, unemployment. This is actually really bad. 
I'm going to go down, go down the deck. Because where we're going, we're going to balloon the debt like, to extreme, or maybe probably extreme levels. So, if we can cut down the debt now, compared to where we're going to end up, like, huh. Yeah, we're going to balloon the debt quite a bit. But, American capitalism. It's a blueprint from which other free capitalist nations model themselves on. It's still based on free trade with minimal government intervention in the economy, but there are several aspects that make this system different from other forms of capitalism. For instance, the American economy is backed by the U.S. dollar. Strong currency, highly valued for stability, and therefore used as the world's primary reserve currency. It's helped America to recover after the Second World War from the Great Depression, built on the foundations of a strong economy backed by the military-industrial complex. Ha, <sighs> gotta love it. Okay, so now I can send some guys over, maybe? Um, they do get some more attack and defense. They're currently fighting, which they do need more def attack and defense immediately. Sabotage Shonan's War Machine. Let's get local revolts. Using connections and the other groups net or UMAJF's network of super agents. Our peasant revolts across the country. Except that's not bad. I think I want to immediately give them some aid, though. Even though meet with generals, command power is okay. Um, they get less stuff. They get some equipment. Yeah, let's give them this stuff. Now, I do want to remember that we need to keep some political power because we want to get Italy in the sphere. Or not in sphere. No, we want to keep Italy out of the sphere and keep him, get him into the OFN. So, by doing this, that's fine with us. Uh, the war has started, so... How do we send... What do they, they do have a port. The U-M-A-J-F. Immaculate Impressions. <clears throat> Another look into the mirror. Once Woody Hand went to tie around his neck, just seeing as a millimeter or two off center, which was immediately corrected. An obsessive attention to immaculance. To some, but to him, impressions were the difference between success and failure. Anything less than per perfection damaged first impressions. And he only got one first impression. When people thought of battlefields, they thought of bombed out arm uh, bombed out fields, armies of soldiers, and parades of weapons and tanks. When they th thought of soldiers, they pictured camouflage, body armor, guns, and helmets. These days, a new battle was taking shape. One well, not in trenches and bloodied streets, but in boardrooms, hotels, and balconies in dim and light. A battlefield where the weapons were pens and words, and soldiers were wore suits and ties, different tools, and curiously similar outcomes. These battlefields, of consequence, just as real as any single conflict. Success or failure meant the difference between peace and war, and to determine which, which nation would prosper or regress, and which people would live or die, and that was before his own career implications. Failure for him, showing weakness at best in emotion, at worst being removed and blacklisted. The diplomat swallowed again, once more going its appearance in the mirror. As he made sure his cheeks were perfectly smooth, he wondered if his brother felt such stress when he was on the front lines. If he felt the weight of knowing that the decisions he made would have ramifications, not just over life and death, but the fate of the nations as well. The art of diplomacy was delicate yet essential. Seeing the time, he stepped away from the mirror, stealing himself. He let his hands fall to the side. The towel was straight. His cheeks were smooth. His hair styled and set, suit pressed. It was time to get to work and change the world. Wars are fought with weapons, and they started with words. So right now, we're not going to suppress the riot of center. We're just going to go and make sure Germany can't interfere in our little American abode called the Americas. And so, actually, we need to close out of this one. It's fine. Um, so that's weird. It, it says you need a port. They do have a port. Am I, am I going crazy? Uh, do they have... Of course, they don't have an air base. So it doesn't even matter. Um, that's actually look, not looking very good at all. But I'm glad we did send them some stuff to immediately begin. Social policy, if you want to look at that, please go right ahead. Germany's, Germany's moon landing. If you want to read about that, please go ahead. We begrudgingly congratulate Mr. Oh, Herr Kohlner. Combat schooling, of course. Economic policies. And we have social policies as well. Casting off. With a compass in hand, butterflies in stomach, he gazed off towards the visage of Anchorage. Rapidly shrinking away into the horizon, a game of cards and a hearty serving of alcohol had certainly done wonders of feet of excitement and wonder lust while they were docked in port, but he had to admit, I was hard to get the yesterday's goodbyes out of mind. His mother's reaction did not surprise him, a quiet bout of sobbing and a laundry list of demands as he stood before the front door. She'd been nervous for weeks, <clears throat> and in that time he'd done his best to reassure her. This was something he needed to do. He would take all available precautions, and he would have all the necessary documents. It was a conversation that seemed to never end. No, he had resolved any lingering strife with Mom. It wasn't her that spawning, that was such spawning, such remorse in his seabound heart. Surprisingly, it was Dad. To say his father was an enigma would be an understatement. Childhood members existed beyond... Count. Missed baseball games, absent birthday parties, one word responses to kindergarten art pieces. It was not that dad didn't care at all, per se, from time to time. He would show his affection, teach his sons to replace a flat tire, too. The problem was consistency, or lack thereof, any any moment. Dad might disappear into the basement again, or a car would pull out of the driveway and return hours after family dinner had ended. He never knew what to make of it. Perhaps the war had simply taken too, too large a toll, created a man who could only function on whiskey in lonesome hours. So when dad burst into tears in front of his, the taxi, launched him into a bear hug, and handed his son a compass and pistol subtly before the car door closed, it came up but feel shaken. Was he really making the right decision? If it could affect a man that was such as that so greatly. Ultimately, he brushed the thought away and returned below deck. There was no turning back now. He had a great and exciting adventure laid out before him. He would return alive and ultimately change for the better. Time to find out what's out there, a necessary sacrifice. 
11,952. The number danced on Nehru's head as he, as he hesitated to accept it as a fact. And last just last month, yes, it's been particularly bad. Our positions were lit. Ahmad Bostaman trailed off, and he noticed Nehru's eyes wide and glazed over. Malaya needs this. As men and women, they die for something that worth fighting for. But I don't want anyone to die, Ahmad. In fact, I'd like nobody to die. Not over this. Not over he trailed off. The freedom panditiji. Pund I know, I prefer they weren't gone either, but I know they'd be happy knowing they died fighting for freedom. If they knew, if they knew die fi fighting, but not only for the freedom, but a better world, I'd know they'd be happy with their fate. If a little under 12,000 people die for the freedom, then every single one of them died fighting for a better future. Bostaman, uh, Bostaman looked at Nehru, now deep in thought, processing what Ahmad had said. You see, one cannot create a competent state, certainly not a social state, by hoping for a better future. One must fight for it, whether or not those standing in your way approve. Look, nobody's ever going to admire us for our work, Nehru saw or stared at most of mama, but it must be done. Never let aside trying to clear his head. Look, next time, just keep an eye on the comms, okay? Got it? We've lost enough good people as is, and I don't want to lose any more than we already have to mistake. And to have a mistake, we just learn how to fix it. Standing up from his desk chair, sitting opposite Nehru, most of my mom walked to the window overlooking the luscious green Indian scenery. Certainly, Pandichi, first things first, when you get back to Malaya, easier said than done. I think the longer it takes you, the better we do. Um, what do they have? Dismal infrastructure. We need to look at ours as well. Wow, that sucks. United Malay and anti Japanese front. We even lost defense too. Hmm. That sucks. But I do have some coffee. I just finished that. Tastes pretty good. Operation Nassau. That is not bad. I get more weekly stability too. Hmm. More attack and defense. That's good. And Japanese bombing runs. That's not good. Huh. <clears throat> But whatever we can do to help stop the sphere from encroaching on enemy's territories, the better. If you want to read about this one, please go right ahead. As one eagle falls, another one rises. Just don't lose your territory, son. Stellar dreams. Oh, if you want to read about this one. Ah, this is... Ah. Amazing. Some men still dream. But I think, I think in Indiana, there's a school that's named after John Glenn. So, yeah. Awesome. And poverty's getting a lot better. Holy crap. Well done, gentlemen. Now, of course, like normal, this is kind of... Well, this stuff is fine over here. Um, I want to wait to do that. I want to send more volunteers, but the whole CIA thing takes a while to do. So, actually, ah, oh, I should have done the one. Why did I do this one? Why do I do? We gotta do Southeast Asia. If anything, we gotta do Southeast Asia. Class three Senate elections. Oh no! Who are we gonna do elect for the class three Senate elections? Blakely connected. No. Um. Oh. 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 Whoops! My finger slipped. We're going for uh, NPP. Oh no! Oh no! Actually, for this one, I command power is okay. You know, it's not bad, but still. Division defense. Mm. I'd, I'd rather just give them equipment, to be honest with you. Eh, that's okay. Factory output's not bad. Daily political power game, plus 0 0.05. Eh, that's alright. Uh, factory output goes down. You have to get more attack and defense. Integrate. This one wouldn't be bad to do. I don't mind doing that one, but. We could try it, but they're still holding out. I want to see that how long they can hold out. So, what do we want to do? The south is probably going to do really well for us. Deep south. Well, we can do a little bit more deep south. Why not? There you go. See what we can do. See what we can muster up. One flew over the cuckoo's nest. Please go right ahead. And if you are like to read this, please go right ahead. Nice. Protest in Birmingham. You want to read about that too? Please go right ahead. Ooh. Oh boy. Goring's been named successor. All right. We don't have that many national spirits. we got Last Bastion of Liberty. We've got American Malays, which is not great. We have Jim Crow, which... Huh. Just costs us more. And so we United. Counter protest in Birmingham. If you want to read about that, please go right ahead as well. Bandit Nehru goes to Washington. Uh, I think I read this one before, so if you want to read this one again, please go right ahead. What's next? Hamburgers in Bombay. There you go. And bring out the tinder box. We're going to immediately do that one, too. All right. 056 plus some research and research speed. Yes, please. That's good to do. Thank you. And come back all the way up here. So, here are the generals. They're still holding out very well. Hmm. Giving them equipment would be really good, but why can't we send them volunteers? And it's a question of geography. If you want to read about that, please go right ahead. Class dismissed. Hmm. Ah, we'll try. Why not? We'll see what happens. How are we looking here? 101.8, 31.5, surplus of $9 billion. Growth is not very much, but that's okay with me. Because where we're going. Oh boy. Oh boy. Yep, my research facilities. Yeah, we'll fix that later on. It's fine. Operation success. Good, good, good. There's nothing we can do. Mm, that seems like kind of like a missed opportunity. I'm not gonna lie. 
Oh, we need the stuff in, in South America, too. I forgot about that, yeah. It's been a while since I've played America, so... Whatever. Oh, they actually... Look at that! They actually came back out! Nice. You know what? I might send them supplies. Why not? Bring out Tinderbox. Friends of the Philippines. Malayan Rebellion. If it, actually, I might actually read this one, because I don't know what, if I've read this one before. The Malayan Blinds to Love. It's found itself in gold. In an incredibly escalating fire that has burned throughout its lush jungles for what seemed like an eternity now. With every passing day that those Japanese dudes continue to hold their dominance over the lands and seas of Malaya... <clears throat> More innocents are sent to be slaughtered like animals in another new contraption or scheme devised by the IJA or Camp Ita to maximize local suffering, choke through wishes and hopes for liberty and freedom. The U.S. has always stood as a bastion for liberty and humanity, and we must not leave our Malayan brothers wailing from the barbaric rage that the Japanese induce upon them. Guns, tanks, planes, and just by whatever the UMAJF freedom fighters need to continue their honorable fight against imperialism and tyranny will be sent to them, sent to them effective immediately. The stubborn emperor and his cabinet in Tokyo must learn that the peoples of Malaya and America are not ones to be pushed around or treated as slaves. You know what? Give them some good stuff. We're going to give them a lot of stuff. So that's the only time we're going to send them extra PP. Uh, oh, yeah, there we go. Oh, we're going to do stuff here, too. A UDN candidate support. Oh, we can get involved in people's politics. Oh, this is about Brazil. Right? Yeah, Quadros influence. Oh, I don't know who to influence. Oh, I don't know. I just want to get more political power. That's all I care about. Screw Brazil's politics. Well, actually, probably not. Can we, get, can we get Brazil in the OFN? Oh, let me know if we can. Oh, that'd be so nice if we could. Authorized bombing runs? I'd love to. 101.06. Not bad. Because it was 101.8. So, solid campaign. Good job, guys. Good job. Does this go down by 0.3%? Debt to GDP ratio? Nice. 9 billion. They're in a middling campaign. It's very, very nice to see. Very, very nice. Where are we? Oh, we're down here. Oh, they were... They are pushed out again! Kuala Lumpur! If they get a port clang... Oh, it's over for them. Can I send volunteers yet? No, we cannot. God dang it. You know what? It's only command power. Here, give them even less defense. Nice. German spy arrested. If you wonder about this, please go right ahead. That's one less net see to worry about. Bringing out them tinder boxes. Uh oh. Present daily briefing. Um, I think I read this one before. Oh, yeah, containment theory. Plan rebellion. Um, oh, let's read it. Mr. President, we believe the best way to curtail Japanese economic and military powers is to draw them into new and escalating conflicts, get them bogged down in new jungle wool, and feel the pain. Alright. President Nixon nods carefully, concerned his advisor's comments. Go on, Bob. One of McNamara's aides walks up to the with a pair of rolled up maps. Each one bears a detailed map of a Southeast Asia country. Two of the large potential targets are Indonesia and the Philippines. Indonesia is both a literal and political archipelago, riven by Japanese resource extraction, military regimes, and native collaborators. Meanwhile, the Philippines is a rebellious nation, as we all know, and the population is believed to be very resentful of their occupiers. Both countries have active rebel groups which we could use as proxies against Tokyo. Nixon presses his hands together in a gesture of contemplation. Staring at the black and red markings that dot the map, alright, Bob? What form will this proxy war be taken? <clears throat> McNamara's aides pulled out more maps, more lists, more explanations, and over the course of the morning, a bloated strategy to drive new knives into the Empire of Japan takes form. They'll have no peace with honor. Absolutely not. Oh my goodness, I just want more growth. But cutting down that desk will be important. Uh, if you want to about his speech, oh, more political part of us. If you like about MLK Jr.'s speech, please go right ahead. I think I don't think it's really changed, so. They have a dream? Well, that's nice. You can all dream as much as you like, but we'll see what happens. Uh, what else do we have here? More political power, of course. Protect American interests would be good. Mm, anything up here? Can we... No. Nothing there. I don't know. I don't, don't remember which way Brazil needs to go for us to do this. Stop the companies. I played with them once, and that was literally it. So, talk to the Americans. Uh... Oh, it's Quadros playing, huh? Maybe we'll go to Quadros once? Increase lots of influence. I'll try it, why not? Alright, sending combat engineers. Yeah. Authorized bombing runs. Yes, sir. Come on, get that port, god dang it. Get that god dang port. But, if you'd like to read about the next focus here, let's see. Vanguard of Freedom. 
I'll read it right now. The people of Asia yearn to break free from the Japanese yoke, far from the reaches of the Pacific to the back waters of China, disgruntled peoples, and would be freedom fires lurk beneath the shadows of Japanese suzerainty. None more so than in Malaya, where years of pent up tension between the peninsula's ethnicities and their Japanese occupiers have exploded in full scale uncertainty. Uncle Sam, of course, all oh, bless his heart, is more than happy to lend a helping hand. Whether one subscribes to the theories of dominoes, roll back to toolbox, all can agree that aiding a stand against Japanese imperialism in America is in America's best interest. We're lucky to merely be the first step towards freedom for all of Southeast Asia. Monday morning in Nuke. Kupuna was fervently sticking his hand around his satchel, it passed by a notebook, some coins, a comb, and a photo of his mother before finally reaching its intended destination, his ID card. Taken out, he hands it mutely to the man in front of him, a U.S. Army soldier. After taking a glance at this card, the soldier handed it back to him and said, Very well, you can carry on. Kapoon places it back into a bag and walks past the soldier without replying. He gets pulled aside about once every week on his way to work with how few people there are in Nuke. You'd think the soldiers would come to recognize who he is and what his face looks like. He doesn't mind it much, however. The Americans tend to keep them to themselves, much more than the Danes did anyways, but still, we wish him to make it didn't make him late for work. It commutes a little longer. Let's see. Definitely wearing later husband underneath. Sounds like a commie load of bull because we're going NP Oh my god, MPP. They actually got quality power. Look at that. I wasn't even paying attention to this uh for part of this off screen, so. That is fun with us. We didn't even send him any volunteers or anything. Echoing cries. As you know, <clears throat> we've been able to secure a port. This breakthrough now allows us to actually get some of our American boys onto the ground over there. Davis took a map off the table in front of him and pinned it on the wall. And as you can see, the route is a pain in the butt to follow and it proved to be even bigger pain in the butt to actually travel through. But alas, we have to be as careful as possible to avoid interception by the IJ and or has to carnal stuff his nose into the matter. A wide grin encompasses a compass in Davis's face. He was as gleeful at the fact that American boots were finally going to march into Asia and challenge the supremacy of those imperialist Japanese maniacs. You know, General Hafiz, was that your name again? I'm glad we can help you in this battle. The Japanese have blighted my own life. Those effing dudes stole my children and my wife back in Hawaii. They took everything I treasured so deeply and just ripped them straight from my very hands. His smile faded and his eyes flooded with tears. He might not have accompanied them on that fateful day yet. The screams and cries of poor Marissa and Jack as they, along with their weeping mother, pointed out their last breaths of air and continued to haunt him. His brain had betrayed him when he first thought, thought first thought to imagine their fates. I had one child. I mean, he always used to play on the dirt and was always a bundle of joy. One day, back when those Cretans first stormed the place, he'd been out playing on the mud as usual. I and my wife at Halima had tried to get him back to go back inside, but he refused, and when the Japanese showed up, he asked the soldier to play with him. The soldier didn't even take a second to think about before he shot him in the cold blood, and I was left frozen at the window, unable to muster the bravery to confront the killer, staring on as the soul departed his body and his blood stained the ground. The room was silent and empty. Oh, the usual grinding of soldiers, only the disturbance being the chirping of crickets. There in the muted hall sat the two men collapsed into each other's embrace and weeping over their guns in hand. They all avenged their loved ones, even if it means their own lives. Nice. They actually got the port. They, they got, we got the event before they even got the port, but probably just because they defeated them. Nice. Now, we're going to send over to the 101st Airborne and the 82nd Airborne. Oh yeah. And we want as much attack as possible. Extra marine stuff. It's really, these guys are actually infantry, so... Push supply grace. Yeah, if you're going to get wounded, we're going to get wounded really well here. So now, we are done sending any extra other things oh, to them. Oh, look at all these guys. That's not bad. We can send 120 planes. Not bad. Um, I did set up a few planes that we could use here. 120 planes. So, uh, let's go to 50. And we send it up to 70. There we go. There we go. Not bad. And these guys are fully trained as well. So, gotta love it when you set stuff up. Off screen. Alrighty, tidy. Still not too bad. Operation success. Well done, gentlemen. We're still campaigning, campaigning, campaigning. And anything down here? Not yet. I've just been doing the whole quadros thing. I'm not sure that's really worth doing. Uh, let's look at it again. Save democracy, liberal democracy. Just because with this plan, I mean, I don't know if we can go OFN this side. Maybe you can, maybe you can't. But I want to go this side. So, slow down industrialization. Talk to the Americans. Lower, lower corporate corporation tax. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Reduce Japanese stress. If I have to influence things there, we'll see what happens. Oh, yeah. We got to deal with the Philippines as well. A call. Uh, oh, yeah. If you want to this, please go ahead. What have we got ourselves into? Oh, we, we better win this one before anything else really bad happens. But it's time to send a couple planes their way. Now, pretty, pretty much in the war, pretty probably, honestly, at this point, pretty quickly, just because, um, well, if they're winning this hard already. They, they probably don't need help, so. Oh, look at them choppers go. Go, chopper boys, go. Oh, look at all that lag, though. Oh, boy. Go, choppers, go. Oh, I got Japanese things here, too. Actually, we probably go right here first. Actually, we, if we just use one division, we should probably get it done going that way, too, so. 
Less than a hundred billion in debt. Not bad. Of course, we can't do any research, basically, but whatever. Nice. That's exactly what we wanted here. Go on in. Help him out. Help him out. Delete. Delete. Took some more research. Yes, please. Anything about research? Ooh, more political power growth would be really nice. Let's go research speed first, though. Good job, boys. They might be Japanese tanks here, but y'all can probably beat the crap out of them. Look at all that army speed we're getting. Nice. Very good. Media Slams Nixon, if you wonder about that, please guard ahead. They got it out for him. Oh, you bet they do. Oh, you bet they do. Let's see how much we can realistically influence South American elections. Uh, yeah. Let's get local revolts. We're kind of good. We'll be fine. Let's be actually send guys here too, so. Let's go here too. Kota Melaki. Help him out. Help him out. Long nods and the sunrise. Uh, if you want to about this, please go right ahead. Mr. Yes, Mr. President, we need to do this now. Actually, maybe I should have read that one, but whatever. I can't tell what I've read because I've played America so many times already. Because I love playing America. Oh, and you actually probably want a go more sure here. Cretan. Defensive. Planning speed. Uh, West Merlin. Why not? Nice. You guys actually go in with you guys? Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Solid campaign. Oh, we got 25 up. Oh, my gosh. That's a lot of experience. Balls are updated. Very good. Very, very good. We just did finish Vanguard Freedom. Nope, good. Good, good, good. good. And what else we got here? Uh, Friends of the Philippines. Well, since the beginning of the occupation of the Philippines, only 15,000 or 30,000 Americans garrisoned in the archipelago ever came home. The rest were to perish in the humid jungles of the islands, crushed by the overwhelming Japanese demise, so or so Japan would have hoped. In reality, the brave freedom fighters within the archipelago have not stopped fighting since MacArthur first fled, consisting of those fighting for the stars and stripes and those fighting for free Philippines. The U.S. forces in Philippines has recently sprung up, and we may not have long before they wither and fade. It's good to all that the ironically named Second Philippine Republic will soon undergo its greatest challenge, and if we can do anything to make that challenge all the more difficult, we should. If we want to return to the Philippines, we will need to do everything in our power to support our fighting Filipinos and send arms, ammo, and intelligence support. We'll only worsen the conditions for our enemies and improve the odds of an allied Philippines more, once more, soon. Another domino shall tumble and all of Asia will be under firm control. I'll not be happy they discover it. Fighting Filipinos. The armed forces of the Far East announced its downfall, not with a whimper, but with a defiant roar, hearkening to the revolutionary spirits of the Philippines not too distant past. Rizal, Bonifacio, Aguinaldo. The Kendor and zeal with which an army of bo born warriors promised their oppressors due reckoning had lit flames within every free man from Manila to New York. The wars themselves struck chills into every turncoat's kyphotic backs, dreading in their silent moments the doom they were owed. Langley's context reported rumblings of activity from the mountains and jungles just this morning. Perhaps the new Siga and Baton will resound a second time in the coming days. Chronicle from the East. Dear mom and dad, I'm alive, or at least I was when I wrote this letter in good shape. We're currently camped out in Western Mongolia. I guess that means I've successfully trekked through the Russian Far East. Well, I'd love to tell you about it in person, the letter will have to suffice for now. Kamchatka turned out to be run uh, by the remnants of the Red Navy. As sailors are quite friendly, their leader was even kind enough to grab me a boat to Magadan. Unfortunately, they've been forced to resort to piracy to make ends meet, given the region's desolate conditions. Uh, Magadan, in comparison, was fairly well off. Its people look adjusted to their harsh conditions, and their leader, Mikowski, seems like a nice guy. Across the border, the Yakutsk Republic was dominated by mining companies and while peaceful, it was sparsely populated. It was here where I hired Zoya, an experienced sniper. That was a guy to help me on my journey. Crossing into a Muari and entered the territory ruled by thugs and murderers, where violence and brutality were common and unstrained. Counting myself lucky to avoid injury, we crossed into the Cheetah, territory ruled by forces that seemed to think that the Russian Civil War still isn't over, with its from Australia as its head. Finally, crossing into Barazzi, a land of idealistic revolutionaries fighting against the last tyrannical remnants of the USSR in Irkutsk. A paranoid city which deported me into Mongolia, now run by the remnants of the Red Army. While well, I still have a ways to go before I can get back home, Russia is a fascinating land, and I only hope that with Zoya by my side, I can traverse it all. Wish me luck, guys, and I'll hopefully see you soon. Love, Steve. The meeting. Um, if you're worried about this, please go ahead. This is just a Gion is falling apart as well. Thanks for enough to pacify him. Don't burn and repeal the act or else. Yeah, well, okay. They run a crappy campaign. Good. Very good. Operation success. Great. I'm, I'm really not sure if this is the right one to do, but I don't care. We're going to see what happens. But yeah, uh, if you know how to influence Brazilian elections to get whatever outcome to get whatever outcome we really want, let me know in the comments. I think that would be good to know. Just for a future campaign as well, so. Since I've not played with America since... Actually, I've played with America with... Not two box theory, but some other mods or update. Actually, if you go in, can you actually win here? You actually might be able to. Can we get more planes here? No, we cannot. Darn it. We're doing a good amount of damage, though. 
on Golden Civil War is going on nice. We're doing about five whole damage of air support, ground support, good stuff. Nice. Nice. Oh, is Batom ours or theirs? Are they completely surrounded? Give us some time first. I'll give you guys a little more organization first. So, up oh, we campaign, campaign, campaign. Where do we want to go? Deep South wouldn't be bad. Leaning Great Lakes. Uh, Great Plains. West Coast. Eh, I can do West Coast again, maybe. Why not? I'm going to force the attack. Because they got a lot of guys down there. Oh my goodness. Could recruit another one. Yeah, do it anyways, if you can. Understood. Very nice, very nice. South Africa, if you want to build that, please go right ahead. Understood. Because if they can't move, then you don't get any more organization. And that tank just died, which is awesome, awesome, awesome. Oh, eight divisions left, looks like, or about so. Brazil wins the World Cup, good job, Brazil. We can always put more guys into our reapers or soldiers. Words are hard. There we go, here we go. And, come on, oh, another group here. Not bad. Operation success, good, and these are the airborne divisions we're currently using. They're only 14 combat, which is okay. Wait, 14 come with. 2, 1, 2. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. That's, that should be 12 combat with, right? Am I seeing it right? Elite infantry. Huh. Alright, very odd. Okay. Just in case, we're going to make a few more. Uh, go 2. There you go. Did we win? We won! Should be us, right? Morning, Washington. The president was in a rare mood as the sun came up across the tidal basin. Enjoyed a full night's sleep for the first time in a long time. Hall dimensions passed memo on some very promising polling coming out of Ohio. The headline of the Washington Post read, UMAJF declares victory in Malaya. and came with some very nice pictures of rebels raising flag. Next to like that most of all. It was a kind of visual striking imagery that would say in Boat's he heads long after. They forgot where Malaya was or why it was important. Nixon leaned against a pillar. And the residents took a bite of his breakfast, cottage cheese, and grapefruit, drizzled on ketchup. What the heck? He savored its milky taste. Not even Kenny could ruin his mood. Sure, the brow's probably even now. Talking to some gosh darn liberal reporter at the Boston Globe or New York Times, you bet Sulzberger's boys were trying to find some way to pin this victory on their golden boys so they could challenge Nixon in 64. At the end of the day, though, Nixon was president. He was the only one who gave the Japanese a black eye. He was the one who ended a years long struggle in the Pacific and gave America a strategic ally. All the pictures in the papers were just doing him alone. So long as America kept winning abroad, his election would be a breeze. The president stood for a few mo moments longer, letting himself imagine all the good press he would get. He was determined to relish this moment as long as possible. Nixon more now than ever. Down was fall, but not quite to our side yet. Boats of Tamam isn't quite open to a partnership as Razak is, so if we do a nudge about the CIA, might be in our interest. If we so wish. We look a little better. Eh, is that a good thing? Eh. That's up for debate. There you go. Y'all hold and uh, keep training. Nice. Um, okay, Susan. We won the battle, but not the war. Thankfully, we are in Chen Peng and his faction are tearing, tearing. Malay up in the gra sphere's grasp, but most of his faction successors aren't particularly eager to deepen relationships. With the exception of one, Tun Abdul Razak and his partner here in a democratic, stable, represented democracy, and most importantly, the entry as an OFN as an observer. Ace. Malay is an historic example of the weakness of the sphere, but most importantly, a safe port for their operations in Asia. Now that the naval blockade through the Pacific is simply not an issue anymore. We can move shipments a long way towards their long since operated or separated divisions of the Philippines. Gun supplies there, as America did not forget them, will bring your sons back home. We'll give succor to our long separated army in the Philippines. Find those wanting. And then Operation Cutthroat. The job of seeing the Straits of Malacca are wealthy, rich, fishing rich, and their bounty tower doesn't bring belong to free Filipinos, but the demand darnable uh, rising sun and the cronies. Yeah, it is solely because of the Tense fishing activity. That we can smuggle supplies to underground resistance cells, disguised as another bounty of the seas. Won't be hard to find Malayan fishers willing to part with their ships for a wealthy sum after all. Smuggle weapons and supplies in Indonesian resistance. Cool. Operation Divider. Nice. Well, at least we won. Victor and Spoils. Nixon never did, did like dealing with uh, 
Congress, whether it be pushing for legislation, dealing with civil rights, or persuading stubborn Congress creators, all he had Kennedy for that, of course. No foreign policy was always his purview, and today he had something to celebrate over. Japanese Vita Malaya read the headline of one newspaper, the Sears Bloody Nose read another. From coast to coast, and especially in his native California, news of Japan's defeat of the jungles of Southeast Asia were doing to his approvals what over two hectic years the President of the U.S. had not. Even now, or even the New York Times, are the most favorable of outlets, had printed editorials praising his administration's foreign policy. Ah, oh, sure, the commies, commie head and the rebels hadn't given him the courtesy of a phone call, but he wasn't sure to let that spoil the mood. Still, he had to call Dulles. Making sure Malay didn't slip out of his grasp, the first dominant would have been toppled, and if he had his way, it would be far from the loss. America won, Japan zero. Let's keep it that way, my friends. We gotta keep it that way. Find Filipinos, and then, of course, go burn some jungles, but that's all right with us. Uh, offer eight from West Point. Wait, what is this one? Oh, now we're, now we're, oh god, now we're doing this already. That was fast. Let's see, we should not fail a second time. Offer aid by 5%. Actually, that's command fire. I don't mind using that. What is this one? Lose infantry equipment. Using equipment, they'll be able to field an additional division. That's nice. Actually, that's really strong. Our industrial and aid will slightly increase their GDP. Um, you know what? We'll we can do all three. So, you can have that one first to begin with. Cool. Strike the match. I don't know if I've read these before. Maybe I didn't. Oh, Indonesian rebel groups. We had forgotten you got cart the alleyway. <clears throat> a haggard bar worker drags deep for, from a lit cigarette with its glowing red, red and wispy gray trails. A smoldering ash looks like a tr small inferno set against an inky black sky. As other hand fingers, a small sm package wrapped in used newspaper, a bun of wires protrude from a whole gouge out of Premier Sukarno's head. On a rice paddy outside, Sebu City, a former wrapped in a farmer wrapped in blood red cloth, douses a bale of rice stalks with a flat of fluid. His he eyes a full moon in between empty zippos. Then out a field of stars accompanies its wan light. As garments are lucky this evening, and a night of this bride, even a blind man from the hilltop smiles awake and spotted a pillar of smoke in a derelict apartment in Darwin CBD. A plain clothes tunes her ham radio to an unused frequency. Her training ears, her trained ears, scour through the sack for the string of numbers that will set a thousand islands alight. Memorandum for the Philippines. While the situation in the islands was stabilized after the 1961 ceasefire concluded the joint anti loralist offensive, succeeding developments may force another more decisive confrontation in the near future. The power struggles within the fracturous communist part of the Philippines culminated in General Secretary Jose Lava's ouster by Luis Tarak, Taruk, commander of the party's armed wing. Following the retreat, retreat from Central Luzon to the Cordilleras, base area. Reports from surrounding villages suggest that the hardliners marshalling resources to rebuild the fleet of forces ahead of a second offensive. Similar efforts are being undertaken by the Philippine Department. Uh, further south, aided by overt and covert shipments received in Davao cities following its liberation, having likewise regained the Baco before the ceasefire, General Fertig has since fortified the USFIP's role. Toehold, sole toehold in Luzon while its forces recover. Optimism for the island's total liberation remains unabated by recent setbacks. In contrast, agents of Manila describe the prevailing mood as fatalistic. <clears throat> Government reassurances uh, be belie a record number of both arrests for seditious behavior and luxury liners leaving port after years of repression. Faith in the Yulo regime has plummeted to an extent where its lastingness is being open the question. The archipelago teeters closer to one final war. Oh, let's hope so, man. Let's hope so. We like a little bit of conflict because we're building up more stuff here, anyways, but still. Oh, someone survived the crisis, huh? Alright. Um, where is this? Where is Indiana? I'm just kidding. I actually live there. Uh, that's alright, though. Let's see. Get a couple more things. And, uh, like, roads are really important. Actually, they have to do the growth, I think, too, so. Here, you can have them maxed out that stuff. Uh, prisons, we're still working on prisons. Schools, where is Ohio? Okay, never mind. I know where Ohio is. But I know where Ohio Oh, we already maxed out there. That sucks. Calamitous MPP campaign. That sucks. Wow, you already maxed out Ohio, huh? That sucks. So, our, our effectiveness will increase once we get out of this debt. This debt. No debt means we can do th stuff pretty easily. Give a boost. The CIA operas have recently begun the hard work of increasing the power base of Abdul Razak, leader of the faction of the Malayan or Malaysian government most favorable to our organization of free nations in safe houses, residences, and offices throughout Malaya. Those people to approach are being determined. Functionaries are figuring out who and who do not try and get a hold of. The UMAJF is in its original form, so certainly skewed communist. This is what made it so attractive the LN, LNPP and other such Marcus Bukharin's factions. But Chin, Chin Peng, having fought himself to exhaustion against the Japanese Civil War, is no longer in a fit state to direct what does and does not happen in the coalition. As a result, the coalition is no longer bound by a united purpose. Therefore, it's only a matter of time before it splinters into constituents' fragments, and those fragments begin to fight over who will take the wheel for Mr. Chin. Plans have been set to make this play out in a way that benefits the OFM. 
will inflame the ideological differences and uncertainty uncertainty every chance we can get. Then when the Malay politicians are full engaged in cringe inducing slap fights and people are all bemused, confused, or at a loss, we will help them understand that Mr. Razak is the only reasonable candidate for the next leader of Malaysia. A post revolutionary government needs a steady hand to keep it from collapsing, Mr. Razak, being a relatively level minded and agreeable, will be perfectly placed to provide that. So it's for their own good really. It's for their own good. Um Ace. Yeah. I'm gonna do each one of these first a few times, so Operation Ace. Black male in the White House. Oh, we run about that, please go right ahead. Time to call some plumbers. Balls are updated. That's fine, fine, fine. Oh, what did my voice do there? Fine, fine, fine. Oh, boy. We'll see what happens. But look at that debt. 30.1%. Not bad. Could be better, of course. Surplus still up point, a little under 10 billion. We see actually have more economic growth than we did earlier. Even though inflation did go up a little higher, but whatever. Because once we're in debt or out of debt, we're going to try to increase social spending. Increase uh, science expenditure. So that is the goal. Oh, uh, we'll do Deep South one more time. Maybe, maybe we'll do Upper South next. Oh, also, since we're here, uh, we do have a little bit of political power, and I'd like to do this as well. More consumer goods. There you go. It costs a little bit of political power to do this, like 30 PP, but get more growth that way. I'll do it. Intensification of the movement. If you're worried about this, please go right ahead. The nation of America is taking sides. It's only so long before they arm themselves. Still plenty of time. Oh, I forgot to do that focus, didn't I? Strike the match. Oh, I could crack down on the movement, or the Kennedy plan. Actually, I'm glad. Oh, look at this. Well done, gentlemen. Nice. Uh, one generation meets another. Hold on. I'll read that in just a little bit. I forgot about this. Uh, yeah. So we need to pass the civil rights. Yeah. Which is what we're going to do. So, Spoilers, we're going to pass civil rights. If you didn't know. Uh, let's reduce air accidents chances. That's fine with me. Oh, I forgot with this. Yeah, this is toolbox theory. So we technically can just do our... Land action already. One generation meets another in the darkness of a shore somewhere in the south of the Philippine archipelago. The comparative pe peace of the tropical ecosystem was disrupted by the presence of a largely, fairly large vessel landing on the beach. On there was a CIA agent, Tony Poe by name, with a small escort of various regular infantrymen picked for their silence and discretion, joined by a young officer from the airborne troopers named Roger Don Lon, who was carrying a sniper rifle for the time being. Poe nodded. Or no. No, they were looking at, uh, a, with suspicion. At a lantern shine from the darkness, Poe is doubtful. This can't, this can't be the guy we're looking for. It looks like some random idiot wandering, or worse yet, some kind of informant. The sergeant of the infantryman nodded in his agreement. We can open fire, Agent Poe, if you give the order. He nodded, as he was about to give the order. Don Long put his hand on the shoulder to stop him. No, don't do that. Agent Poe looked through the binoculars. You'll see it's one of ours, the USFIPs, to be exact. Poe nodded and looked through and was shocked at what he saw. A warm but unbroken face with his eyes still bright, attached to a man in well maintained but very clearly old model uniform from the Second World War. You're right, Don Lon is one of ours. At ease, soldiers, we've met friends. As the troopers lowered their arms, Don Lon and Poe cautiously walked to the man holding the lantern. The man seemed to be repressing strong emotion on the side of the Americans. When they reached him and shook his hand, the man, who ID'd himself as Colonel Russell W. Volkman, Volkman, a close collaborator of Colonel Furtick, said with admirable steadiness on behalf of the Colonel, Welcome to the Philippines, gentlemen. At this point, Colonel Volkman broke down in tears. Operation Cutthroat, Indonesian Resistance. Win this as well. And I'll go back and do the other one, hopefully. Nice. Not bad. Not bad. I did forget about the. the I did forget about civil rights. Eh, it's only civil rights. Well, that doesn't matter, Kennedy. It ain't, it ain't a question, but I mean, it's the lack of discretion. Well, gosh darn, Brad won't stop talking about the blacks and it's riling people up. He's having all these meetings with these Jew reporters and these activist troublemakers. It's coming to try us, too. You know, rope us into the whole gosh darn business. Well, we ain't falling for it. I, we won't slowly our reputation if we can't get him to stop talking. We'll use him as an example of what happens when you ignore party unity tomorrow. We'll announce we're putting Kennedy in charge of the whole civil rights mess. Let's see how the press reacts when their progressive golden boy alienates his party and can't get, pass a gosh darn bill through Congress. Let's watch Kennedy hang himself with his own gosh darn rope. We lose PP? Well, that sucks. Segregations ain't gonna like it, though. Probably got a little worse, but a crack in the facade. The National Security Council has been gathering, uh, or gathered by order of the President by recommendation of the Treasury Secretary McNamara. Uh, now, Bob, you told me this ain't just about Madagascar blockade. It better not be. You told me there will be no hangups on that issue. Not at all, Mr. President. McNamara shifted slightly in his seat. The director of the CIA actually asked me to have you convene the council. He glanced at the director who had a pipe to his lips. His mouth curled in a glib smile. Get on with it, then the president urged. With a puff of smoke, he leaned in and began. Mr. President, we have contacts high up within the German colonial administration in Madagascar. We have total reason to believe that they have some misgivings about their loyalties to Berlin. With the weakening of the German Empire and with Hitler becoming increasingly ill, it has become apparent that a conflict may break out on the island sooner rather than later. We have word that the rebels are planning to make their moves soon, and uh, <coughs> the local government is divided. Nixon shrugged. Who are these contacts? Can we be sure of their sincerity? McNamara pushed his glasses further up his nose for dramatic effect. The director puffed again from his pipe. Mr. President, of car contact is Rice Commissar Emil Maurice. The president seemed stunned for a moment, but collected himself quickly. My God, that's great. And is it a direct line to Hitler? 
the director noted, Morris is one of Hitler's oldest confidants. Their relationship has been strained as of late, which is partly why he wants out, and his word we think is good. Nixon nodded in silence for several months before continuing. Well, darling, keep me updated on this. If you find any way to reach a bastion, let me know immediately. Let's see if we can make a den in the end. Oh, no, Sounds like a good idea. We need more expertise now, too, which sucks, but whatever. All right, not bad. 97 billion, less than 30% debt GP ratio. Our credit rating is prime, primo, primo, primo. I searched for a champion. If you wonder about that, please go ahead. In a busy fishing market in the city of Benkulu, a pair of fishermen were having a chat. To everyone else, it seemed like they were talking partitioning out of the day's hole. There's some other fish over there, huh? Yeah, them fish are right there, perhaps some others in another place, and maybe the leftovers in that house over there. This was uh, nothing abnormal to the people of Benkulu. Fishermen on the joint ventures split their takings all the time. Sometimes they got into cringe-inducing slap fights over the matter that attracted a eclectic crowds of amused onlookers ranging from the imam in the museum to the harbor master and the librarian. The local policeman had to be shaken awake and often showed up 30 seconds after everything had calmed down. No wonder then that nobody wise up to what was actually being discussed. In fact, this chat was pre-planned secret communication between a CIA agent and a contact operating on behalf of the Indonesian resistance. If one looked really close, they would be able to tell that the two were rather suspicious of each other's intentions. Yeah, that's a deal. Fortunately for the free world, though, that suspicion didn't stand in the way of the deal. We'll send the fish where you want in pronto. Oh, we got 50 PP. Nice. 35 arm XP, so, yeah, let's this one again, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, oh, let's see, at least there's more stuff for the CIA to do this time around, I like that, send over the little cargo men, oh, this one up here, that's fine, um, yeah, give them extra divisions, that's fine with us, totally a-okay, got a couple more days left for the whole election thing, of course it's August and we'll get people elected later on, which is fine, army base, still been on Guantanamo Bay, West Virginia, oh, I guess Virginia can have one. Okay, you can have four. Huh. <laughs> FBI pounces. Well, if you want about that, please go ahead. Solid campaign. Very nice. Very, very nice. Good job, everybody. Good, good job. Can you plan that Civil Rights Act? I don't know if it's changed, but... Change it up. I'll read it anyways. The, the dude did. He did it. The god darn son of a gun somehow got a bill through Congress. Who knows what the heck he did to get Strom Thurmond to stand down, but the thing is going to, to a floor vote and it's expected to pass. All the papers are celebrating the brat of some kind of national hero while our entire electoral strategy is going up in flames. South the Democrats are threatening to split while the dudes in New England are trying to drive Kennedy for 64. The whole thing is wrong. <laughs> the whole thing is, of course, wrong. We're going on the wrong path, all because a smug, stupid son of a gun wanted his face in the papers. What a total per pluperfect booty. Meaning the leaders. Ahmad Bosimama was disappointed. He was disappointed that Malay had refused to put his trust in him after the departure of Chin Peng, and that the people had become disillusioned with him and China and Chin style leadership. It also come to the quick that only the most loyal, ideological, stubborn members of the old guard of the UMAJF had remained with him while all the moderate and conservative come lately's had come on over to Abdul Razak Hussein. He said that he said all that to Razak, whose response was simple and surprisingly sympathetic. I can understand that, Ahmad. Uh, <clears throat> had I been in your shoes, I'm fairly sure I would have had the same attitude. Is there anything else that you want me to keep in mind? Oh, my not. Now, I do. Let's be very clear here, Zach. I don't hate you, and I'm not particularly angry. I know that you and I share all one all-important goal, despite our differences, you and I. <clears throat> you millions all. We all want the pain to go away. We want the Javis legacy scrubbed out. We want the trauma and pain to follow them into the sunset. And that, you got my good wishes and whatever support I can give without selling my own beliefs and objectives. Razak indicated his agreement as Ahmad continued. But there's one thing I'm deeply concerned about, Razak. I've heard strange rumors about the Americans intervening on your behalf in the election. All alone, knows alone, alone, the reason. I don't hold this against you, far from it, but you both and I know how hard it is to understand the logic of those Yankees. But I have to ask one thing, if you please, Razak, don't trade one puppet master for another. Keep Malaysia free, don't let the Americans do to us what the Japanese did scum. Razak nodded, I'll keep that in mind, I'm not thank you for everything. With that, the two parted as friends, at least for now. Alright, so we can't do anything down there. We can't get that stuff down there, so we're north of the zone. He's, oh, he's really dominant. Oh, well, tough. Upper South, maybe? Try it. Why not? Because we can. We've got 5 million in manpower. That's pretty good, actually. That seems pretty darn strong, not gonna lie. Alright, so now we have 43. We need to do one more. Polls are updated. That's very nice. Very, 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 very nice. <clears throat> 97.8 billion. Well, after that, now September. Almost 2% growth. That's pretty good. Not, not gonna lie. 96.064, nice. Almost 2% still. Nice, 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 nice. And we're going to blow this up quite a bit. Stagnation in the Senate. The Civil Rights Act simply means it's another mess. Or another means. That another effort on the part of the President to dominate the country by force and put into effect these uncalled for and the darnable proposals he's recommended. Under the guise so-called civil rights. And I tell you, 
that the American people, for one side or the other, better wake up and oppose such a program. And if they don't, if they don't, they, the next thing will be a totalitarian state in the U.S. Efforts to move any sort of civil rights legislation through the Senate had yet again met resistance from conservatives within the party. This time, however, the filibusters' angry outbursts are delivered to a room with a very different atmosphere, with popular support of the bill only growing, one staunch opponents are beginning to waver. And some MPP senators have even approached this and seeking to give their support for the bill. Many experts are now predicting the bill has a very real chance of passing <clears throat> in the Senate, especially with VP Kennedy's authorship. Tell Johnson to hurry up with those gosh darn deals. How oh, Moxie dies. We're going to that was good head now. Our watch. Cool. Uh, where, where are the Marines at? Or send these guys over too. It's fine. Mm -hmm. Go from. Actually, is that. That's not our territory. Oh, this is our territory. Go for Puerto Rico, why not? San Juan. Georgetown. You go from. Florida, maybe? Miami? Into there. Where are you guys at? Oh, you're already there. Oh, wow. Oh, you're in Australia. 3rd Marine Division. Yeah, come on back, boys. You'll be fine. As long as someone lands, we'll be probably fine. I ain't super, super worried about it, but whatever. Give him a couple days, we'll be fine. Good job. Alright. There we go. This is what we really wanted. Okay, extra political power? Yes, please. Not bad. Not bad at all. And we can't even vote for... Oh, yeah, we can't. 45, 44 out of 45, 6 out of 40 Democrats, all center, and even the far right is like, civil rights, yeah. Some bad. 56? Is it? Nice. Very nice. And then we'll go back and uh, strike the match. Alright, let's get some of these. Oh, I forgot oh, I forgot to do the ship stuff too, my bad. Um, back. I think you guys go right there. It's fine. You guys give me your subs. I forgot to do all this. I, I started doing some of the stuff, but I had to wait for some of the stuff to actually get over here. That's fine. Yeah, that's fine. Whatever. You guys are sub daddies. Um, air controller. Capital ship attack, naval AA attack, carrier cast, very efficiency. Here, here. You're gonna be fine enough. There we go. Do that. Good enough. Boom, boom. Boom. Should be good enough to go. If you guys can, just go on in. You should be fine. Even with half organization, you shouldn't be too bad. Lobster war ends. Sanders is sent. A Brazilian condemnation was the end of yet another meeting of the President's Advisory Group. Top is discussed, but the day had been varied. From discussion, Guiana brewing trouble in Africa. At one point, Secretary of Srazulatate Rogers brought up the President Law of Brazil and his recent speech criticizing the American war in Guiana. Hold a bell, you saying lost complaint in the President mask? Secretary of State nodded. Maybe for domestic consumption, maybe to make his vice president happy. That loon's got a serious problem with us keeping the Americans in order. Or America's in order. What a crock of crap, Nixon shook his head. Well, whatever they think about this, the Brazilians need us. Lots of serious man. So he'll probably stop doing stunts like this if he knows what's good. In the meantime, his little tantrum won't affect crap on the ground. It's a grand scheme of things, right? Who asked him anyway? The Sanders dissent. Click. The TV turned on. A little grayscale man appeared in front of the little grayscale podium. He was talking. The subject of his little speech was highly delicate. I'm unalterably opposed to discrimination or segregation on the basis of race, color, creed, or any other basis, but pro problems of discrimination can never be cured by laws alone. No constitutional bias, basis for the exercise of federal regulatory authority in either of these areas. Click. The TV shut down again. Nothing but an empty screen remained. A small black face turned to her father, curiously asking, Daddy, what did the band just say? I don't understand him at all. Thoughts raced through his head. He was pretty sure that the act was still passed, but the fever and yet eloquent speech of the senator frightened him. It frightened him because he gave the anti-civil rights movement a human face, a professional civil face. Wallace and the Yawkeys were open radicals. And he knew they had taken an incredible series of coincidences for them to come anywhere close to the Oval Office, but the man was something else. He was electable. He was composed. He was scary. Looking at his daughter, the man said nothing. Dear, he just talks about some adult things that's all, by the way. Do you really, you really should get to bed. God, it's already past ten past nine. Laughing as if the whole scene was somehow comical in nature. But as he tucked her into the bed, all I could think of was Barry Goldwater, what might he might do in the future. Oh. Good old Barry, huh? Mr. Mr. Gold. Campaign, eh? Operation success. Good, good, good. And up from Russia. Off from the free state of Magadan. 
The nation of Russia has been a great unknown since the end of the Second World War. Following a Barbarossa and the USSR's collapse, the CIA could scarcely glean any info from that vast country, of course. Except for the West Russian War of the 50s, the Russia of our imagination has become a cesspool of violence and infighting, with the German bombings preventing us, or preventing any attempt of regional warlords to consolidate power. At least, this seems to be the case in Russia, uh, West Russia and Siberia. Well, the land area that stretched from the Baltic to the Pacific. There are some stretches of territory untouched by the banditry and chaos that plagues the areas adjacent to the German Reich. From the central Siberia, the primary recipient of the Bukharan era Siberian plan, we have heard that the Republic has risen and collapsed there between the Second World War and the West Russian War. Then there is Russian Far East, a region that the CIA has been observing for quite some time in brief. The legitimate government of the Soviet Union, under the provisional leadership of Genrik Gota, uh, retreated there after their defeat subsequently. The anti Bolshevik front sprang out from Manchuria and Abin, making significant gains before shattering the three parts based in Cheetah, uh, Magadan, and, of course, Amur. In particular interest of this briefing, as a free state of Magadan, led by Mehrel Mikovsky, a local fascist of some dispute. Or repute. He and his foreign minister Nikolai Petlin has promised reforms and democracy should the U.S. support their bid for the, uh, as Mikovsky insisted, great crusade for Russia as well as intelligence and information. The agency notes that the decision is a president alone to make, however, is cautious that the ca or it cautions the president in supporting any fascist bid for Russia. And moreover, the aforementioned leader Petlin seems to be a more malleable candidate for leadership. Whatever the president decides, the agency shall carry out. Lenamar tentative support and exchange for reforms. We could use the intel. Nice. Back over here, too. Well, I guess maybe not. I think over here, Stifling, Destabilize Japan. Um. Why not? We could try that one. I mean, we want to help the Australians next, too, so. Alright, boys, see what you can do. A silent spring. Uh, man is part of nature in his war against nature's against himself. Those are the few of the chilling words marine biologist Rachel Carson used to decry America's ignorant addiction to pesticides in her newly released book, Silent Spring. Uh, if you want to keep reading about this one, please go right ahead. I think I've read them before, for the future. Oh, nah, I think there's two more divisions there too, but whatever. So as far as it makes waves. If you want to read about that, please go right ahead. Future rock and roll, maybe? If anything, I'm going to send you guys over, too. That's fine. Good, good, good. Campaign elections? Yes, please. Oceana. Ooh, West Coast. Nice. Paramaribo. Death, Supreme Court Justice, fell vacancy. Civil Rights Act is passed for now. Strike the match. Civil Rights Act passed. If you want to read about this, please go right ahead. Increase the status of civil rights. Replace legal inequality with equal rights. Southern Democrats announce their allegiance to the MPP. It shifts to the right. The rights of the minorities will improve. Increases monthly voter franchise and minority rights. Very cool. Very, very cool. Minus point one is not as good as it used to be. Uh, where are we at? Owen United. American Malay. It's cool. There we go. Token civil rights. Get some more daily political power, which is nice. More stability. More cost, though, which does suck, but whatever. Unrest in the why not. So that's what happens when we got, when we got that stuff. Not much to train the trans intelligence in the agencies, increase their expertise. Heck yeah. Always oh, got that done anyways. Okay. American businesses, Mexico. I think over here we really care about intelligence anas analysis. What's fine? Build the port of Magadan. Sure, why not? Porcelain. Nah, we're good. Anything here? Uh, let's see. Cherry, huh? Yeah, we could try that. A an attempt. Good job. Did we win? No? Alright. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. There we go. We won. Nice. Good job, guys. Go home. Come to Florida. I, I can't. I just. I cannot imagine living in Florida. I'll be honest. I can no longer imagine living in the Deep South. Oh, bring this finally done, huh? Nice job, guys. Um, yeah, take this. Probably won't need the Navy again for a Russell campaign, but that's okay. If you worry about the U.S. intervening in Guyana, please go right ahead. Be our friend or else. Yeah. Be our friend or else. 2.2% growth. Nice. Inflation's still pretty high. But 29.1% is pretty good. Um, I'm thinking even a temporary tax hike might not be bad. Polls erupted. Not bad. Yeah, I could double tax hike. Go down the debt. Nothing. No. Please, please, please. As we're still building stuff up here, aren't we? Yes, sir. West Virginia still. Um, Nevada. I'm lazy. Good job, guys. Madagascar calling. Uh... What do we want? Prisons? No. We want admin office. 
Well, the ease and gentle law of sleep was simply a luxury not meant for men like William Westmoreland. As much as much became apparent as the telephone next to him, or his bed, rang to life. With a grunt, he turned over to his clock. Found out that he could only register the first number being three and picked up the phone. Westmoreland, that's Maurice from Madagascar. He, Westmoreland squinted his eyes. He tried to process the words being spoken to him. Uh, uh, the Rocks Commissar? Westmoreland turned over, sat straight up, rubbing his temple. What do I owe the favor here, Rocks Commissar? Hilarious, Westmoreland. Work with me here now. Listen, we both know about the daddy, don't we? He's doing worse for wear, we both know. The Rocks Commissar let a shaky suppressed sigh. I want out. Do you hear me? The minute our glorious fear dies, the natives in the milch are going to fight. Well, uh, to be the first to have any kind of my head on a spike, and Madagascar is going to be effing exploding. Do you hear me? Westmoreland couldn't believe his ears. <clears throat> Westmoreland, do, do yourself a solid here. Pull your head out of your butt and help me. Westmoreland thought to himself for a moment. You're really contemplating this. Westmoreland felt a pang of regret hit him as he let out a sigh. There'd be no alternative they wanted to make the intervention in Madagascar look good on the front papers. Fine. Expect further contact within the hour. You're a lucky man. Email. Yeah, I better start counting my prayers. Nice. Good. We want to make sure that we do things very well here. Armor, artillery, I'll see what happens. We'll try to use it, but we'll see. Alright, not bad. Not bad so far. We can recruit someone else. Oh, we've got time to do it, why not? Understood. Charity? Why not? Anything to help under undermine the whole German Einheit's pact. That's economy, stupid. If you want to buy this one, please go ahead. Because I'm, I'm more than certain I've read this one, so. Oh, wait. Well, maybe not. Well, we'll read it anyways, why not? The Nixon White House had never been the warmest of places. Whatever his failings, hauled men run, ran a tight ship, tossing their eyes and our tops, we couldn't keep up, replaced with Nixon loyalists and Kennedy men, with the president could stand. It was a team that secured the Nixon's, that secured uh, Nixon's domination, ensured Kennedy's support, and helped deliver a landslide victory against the turncoat Thurman and the NPP. Now, it was tasked with ensuring that the RD supermajority achieved in 60 would not fail in 62. Well, came with that arcana came the accented voice of Kentucky Senator Thruston Morton, Senatorial Committee Chair. Worst comes to worst, we lose what? Four seats in the South, New Hampshire, and a couple out West? One of the staffers not at least that's what we think. We should have Bush's seat soon up, but Pennsylvania's looking dicey, and Yates is giving direction to run for his money in Illinois. Haldeman nodded. The president's approvals aren't looking great. The media doesn't like him, and the levels of wearing and the conservatives think he's too moderate after his deals with Rockefeller and Kennedy. Well, Harry, Morton said, exasperated, what's our plan in midterm? Old man leaned in. Truman was thrown out of his booty due to the post-war recession as much as him signing away Hawaii. Dewey nearly followed him. The point is American people's vote with their pocketbook as much as they do with their gut. And if the economy's doing well, so should we. Morton shook his head. By Nixon's unpopularity. Can be offset. Haldeman raised his hands. Jack Kennedy's on the ticket for a reason. Don't use him. Toss in something about the ports in the sphere and get Ike to remind everyone else who ripped up the Kage courts and who's taking the fight to Tokyo overseas. Morton smiled. The con enemy. Kennedy and Kage. Hey, if it works for Ike, it can work for us. From now on, the voters expect us to grow the economy and control the debt. For the 1964 election, they can expect the economy to grow to $342 billion and have less debt than 29.1%. Oh my god. Wait, what? This is, this is something I've never seen before. This, this is actually really cool to see. I like this. As long as you grow to $342 billion, so we need $16 more billion dollars for GDP and less debt than 29... Oh my gosh. That is different. I like that quite a bit. My goal is just cut down the debt, but you know what? I like that little flavor that I threw in there. That makes it a little more challenging. Not, not not really challenging that much, but just like a little bit more lively. Oh my gosh, I like that a lot. Some people won't, but you know, at least for me, I think that's great. I think that's an awesome addition. Holy crud. If that's the case, can I, I want more growth. Please, let me max it out. Who cares about research? Good. Hoover's offer? Oh, I remember this one. So the campaign, great. If you want to read about Hoover's offer, please go right ahead. Um, because we want to get an MPP candidate in 1964 with, this starts with G, and his, and his last name starts with W. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, he's going to be fun. We're going to go down one of his routes that we have not, that I've never done before. So, but I'll keep him safe. Yeah, keep him in safe. Keep him safe. You know, you know, keep, keep, keep him literally in the safe. Keep him literally in the safe. Uh oh Oh, boy. Okay, so Scott is nominee. We've got to take a look here. Uh oh so what happened with all this stuff here? So, for the Senate, we lost five Republicans, four Democrats, and we got nine far right. Nice. Very nice. Because now, this looks like this. Oh, I should have thrown in the map. Oh, crap, I should have thrown in the other map mode. Oh, there's a GUI, I think, at the time of this recording. I forgot to throw it in. My apologies, everyone. Eh, that's a purple South. Purple Indiana, purple California, too, so we'll see. I think, hopefully, in the next episode, I can still use the GUI map mode, which doesn't do much except just literally just changes the look of the GUI graphic user interface, so... Uh, where is it? Here it is. Alright, so what do we want? Congressional situation. We can only have 65 votes, which is more than enough to pass laws, which is good. State of the Supreme Court. Very conservative. 
six conservatives, three libs. Economic expectations. Oh boy. Mm, we don't want to make it too liberal. We're going to go conservative. It, it doesn't really matter. We'll go to the liberal option. Get more political power that way. Just because now we have five conservatives uh, and then four libs. Not bad. Increase unity? I don't think we will. Where are we at? 41. Not bad. Anything else around here? No, not going to suppress anybody just yet. Anything down here as well? Nope. Anything down here? Nope. Anything down in Africa? Nope. Anything in the Middle East? Oh, uh, yeah. A gun Jewish paramilitaries? Why not? We love the Jews here. Let's not talk about USS Liberty. Anyway, strike the match. A more balanced court. If you want to read about that, please go right ahead. We'll pull, we'll pull the Founding Fathers' ideals. Oh, I got... Oh, oh well, they should have... Eh, whatever. It's fine. Any subcontinent? Yeah, please. Uh, from one Raj's corpse sprung two governments following the British withdrawal, the Republic of India, and the Azan Hind movement coalescing in Bengal. Were awareness of deprived Japan of its momentum by the time they set their sights to the British Empire's crown jewel, impelling them to free most of India as a neutral power instead? Duke has seen, since seemed content with letting the cats paws in Calcutta bet against their adversaries in New Delhi for the sub subcontinent's destiny. The U.S. can and will do its part in tilting the odds towards a fellow democracy's favor. Already, a slew of American companies have begun moving part of their assets into those growing cities. In anticipation of a growing relationship with President Nixon's inevitable entourages will catalyze. Oh, we can vote? Well, I mean, the voting's over, guys. Not sure we can really vote, so... Thank you. And rec recognize the Republic of India? Whether out of fear of renewing tensions with Japan or similar indifference, the U.S. government has neither received or recorded either of India's governments since 1946. In hindsight, America's acquiesced perhaps too readily to the spheres of vaporous threats when it could have earlier laid the groundwork for countering ambitions in the Asia-Pacific. The Nixon administration will reverse this trend by acknowledging opportunity out of a geopolitical hotspot. In the following weeks, President himself shall visit New Delhi to formally recognize Mr. Nehru as the president of the subcontinent's rival government. The picture of Yosef painted was a grim one. Both the North and West portions of the island are almost independent in practice, if not only in name. Communications have been cut, aside from our informants and infiltrators, and they're being ratted out by the dozens. Soon enough, we'll know absolutely nothing about the situation there. He paused for a moment, sizing up. Expression of Moore's face. He couldn't give the officer any ground, though, and he simply sat silent, waiting for the other man to continue speaking. The West is entirely controlled by the German detachment, completely separate from Emil's faction. They aren't playing with the Reichs Commissar anymore, and this faction seems to be treating the natives even worse than their German rivals. The North has been swallowed up by an entirely different faction. Those empathetic with Gabriel's nationalism and cries for truly free Madagascar, they would be far more sympathetic to us, but these people already have been enslaved ever since 1933. They'd be hesitant to sign off on anything that would undermine their independence, which leaves us with only the East. It wasn't a disaster. In fact, it was probably the best scenario Moore could ever hope for, but it didn't change the fact that it was a crappy one. He would have to fight tooth and nail to claw his forces across Madagascar. There were those last few pre relatively peaceful days. More realized, soon as days would be filled with reports of death tolls, battle reviews, plans, war management. Th thank you, Yosef. Have no fear. Even if we had 100th of the island, we they can stop us. That'll be all. Thank you. With a sharp salute and a sharper match, or march, Yosef let Moore alone in his office. He had just lied through his teeth, and it was necessary. He would have. Uh, we wouldn't. He wouldn't have soldiers believing in a lost cause, and worst comes to worst, we can always have the Pentagon. Like crabs in a bowl of water. Oh, there it already exploded. Okay, and actually, oh my god, thank you. Thank god that Daz actually fixed the mistake or something like that. Because uh, back when you could actually just use little, literal just transport helicopter divisions, they wouldn't reinforce for some bugged reason, I think. I forget the exact reason why. Someone will tell me in the comments, probably. But, oh my god, they actually get back up to normal strength. Are we missing anything here, either? Oh, I can't. I, I love, I love that TNO has thrown in so many, like, civil wars that we can get invo ourselves involved in. We can influence, um... Your transport planes. Eh, yeah, we could use them. Eh, but whatever. Uh, just get involved in so much conflict. Opera success. Well done, gentlemen. Well done. Upcoming race. Yeah, we're good. We're gonna see that. Uh, where we're at. Four to seven. Oh. Well, Jewish paramilitaries are. Oh, is Turkey winning? Holy crap. You know what? We'll do it again. Why not? USS Liberty incident. Let's not talk about that. Turkey's doing really well. Holy crap. The breaking point. Emil Maurice's particularly depressive idiosyncrasies meant that the GMA's HQ and Tomasina had never been a happy place, of course. Even by those standards, the crushing weight of the city's loss truly created an atmosphere of despair at the temporary government's residence just outside the city. Former military household requisitioned when its occupant deserted to militia's forces. The French-looking building was bustling with panicked staff still loyal to Maurice, who could only ponder the reverberating radio bulletins proudly announcing the less of GMA civil servants facing a firing squad at the former capital. The compound stank courtesy of the gunpowder used to sh shoot suspected plague victims at the nearby field hospital, a smell complemented only by that of burning paper. The colonel's classified documents, but Mar Maurice could only... 
could, could hardly take note of the cinch. Amidst all this, the Rock's Commissar was chiefly concerned with finding the telephone landline, which military maps indicated was somewhere nearby. He made sure that Stoffel was engaged in the futile task of reorganizing the irredeemably stupid, who refused to desert into a force capable of delaying the enemy. With the chief engineer of the colony and NASA sergeant, none the wiser to his objectives, Maurice ordered him to sh hook up the telephones he had hurriedly salvaged from his to Toa Masina office and then dismissed the man. Once he was gone, the man who had once been Adolf Hitler's best friend pulled out of the brown folio given to him by Admiral Moore. Hastily skimming through the files to the tune of a not so far off shooting of a plague victim, Maurice finds a number for the American's intermediary in Madagascar. While the faint thunder of artillery begins to creep into Rex Commissar's audible range, Maurice inputs the numbers into the rotary telephone. A call is answered by a man who confirms his role as Moore's middleman after a password is exchanged. Tell Admiral Moore I am requesting immediate evacuation. All right, let's get to it. Burn and loot. I want, well, maybe not looting, but I want to burn. All right, 94.092 billion in debt. 2.2% growth, which we could actually raise up more higher. All right, but 2.3% growth is not bad. 93 billion, 28.4%. Um, so when can we get involved? They're not killing each other yet. God, that guy, every time I see his face. Presence of the garrison, that's not bad. Results are in, they've been in for a while. He's got just a massive four, but he flees Madagascar. Craig Johnson took his chopper low in low across Madagascar on the last leg of a flight that had been miserable since he got his orders. First problem was that he was supposed to fly into German territory without causing international incident. The second was that they were going to pick up some Nazi prick who had lost. The third was actually pulling it off while getting him and his co-pilot killed. Keep a gosh darn eye out, Bill said. We're grabbing this guy and getting out of here. Bill Strafford, the co-pilot, was busy reading a map in his lap. Should we just be up here on the hill? He looked up, as long as he's actually there, fortunately. Or perhaps unfortunately, the man who was exactly where he was supposed to be waving to the helicopters that came into land. The chopper sat down, and one group of unhappy-looking GIs opened the door, getting a look good look at the man jogging towards him. He cut a pretty sad figure, worn down by the time, and who knows what else. Mr. Maurice, get in, we're heading back out. You might want to hold on to something until we reach the coast. <clears throat> Despite the harsh tone of the American, Murray seemed genuinely excited, climbing in and buckling his seatbelt as the helicopter took off. As they sped away back towards the American fleet, the officer had a bad welcome Maurice recalls his orders. His knowledge of the inner Reich is invaluable. Move him to the political asylum. We need an example back home. Take it to Australia and call the media. Oh, actually, that's really cool. That they kind of changed um, that. Like, you can influence either side, too. I like that a lot. I like what the devs have done so far. Like, I, I, I always end up causing myself a lot of trouble criticizing devs for doing things but so far and i've criticized tno devs before like a little bit not too much not too much and i know some, some of the devs didn't like it so um and i do apologize for you know some criticism sometimes it's warranted sometimes it's not sometimes it is though um yeah but i do like what the devs have done here oh my gosh we're out of the budget we're never going to run out of the budget here the ci needs unlimited funds but yeah I, for at least what this campaign so far like it's only 62 still but I like what they've done. Invasion. It was a disaster, Moore thought. Oh, crap. He almost couldn't bear it to take out his hands off his face. The sun had barely begun to crack over the horizon when it was raised by the sound of a fist smashing against the front door. Ah, his bloodshot underlined by a thin layer of sleep, he had opened that same door to find Stoff, Moore's least favorite German traitor. It wouldn't do to say that to his face, so he invited him into his house and fired up a pot of coffee for himself and stuff, and while he poured out a mug for the turncoat, he broke the news. Uh, Mr. Moore, sir, I wish I came here, be came here under better conditions. Don't go to uh, effing preamble, just tell me what's on your mind. Stoff took a sip of the dark brown liquid to clear his throat. It's begun. The garrison has been bombed. Both the rival German force in the west and the natives of the north have moved in on us. We're being pushed back. At all points, total chaos. Surprise has taken hold of the man. Tearing his head out of his hands, he threw the mug across the room, watching a smash into giblets upon the tiny table. He should have seen this coming. The signs were there, and he had taken notice, but he hadn't taken nearly enough action. We need to mobilize now. F, we should have mobilized last week, Moore shouted, smashing his fist upon the marble counter. I don't want to see another soldier's face in the effing barracks, in the city, by the port, anywhere within an effing hundred miles of me. Every man said them all, go effing get. I still fled from the Moore's Malagasy manor. Moore... Uh, fled his kitchen to the small office on the bottom floor. He needed someone on the line now. He hoped that his secretary was still running the phone. He picked up the phone to the Anthony's voice. Oh, thank F. Anthony, you need to contact any man you can get your hands on in Washington. It's beginning when we were prepared. Now, don't worry about it. He slammed the phone back down, folding his head in his arms. It was dumb, stupid luck on the part of Moore's enemies. He hoped that luck wouldn't hold out. Madagascar burns. As it should. I love sending volunteers. We can send two. Oh, God, yes. Oh, I love this part. I love him. And I'm such an American. Getting involved in other people's affairs, I love it. I love it. Hey, they already arrived. Indian subcontinent. Nice. Oh, look at that. Oh, yeah. We did this stuff, too. Yeah, more growth. Oh, point. Oh, this is different, too. Nice. Reserves lose some money. I don't care. Expenses will rise a little bit. Gains subsidized businesses in India. Miscellaneous costs. Cost goes up. 30 days when removed, it gets more money. Miscellaneous income. Oh, yeah. Handout loans. 
Oh, heck yeah. All right, now that's nice. Bombing sorties, not bad. Uh, give him some equipment. Ship American advisors there. Uh, that's not bad. I like that. You can get some more daily army XP for us as well. Combat engineers like the other group. Uh, let's get some more daily. Let's get some more daily stuff there. Like I said, I don't want to spend too much, especially if, was, if we're here already. We should do relatively okay, so I don't mind spending a lot of com command power. Like that's the main thing. And for us, I want to focus down south or right here actually. Yeah, you know what? We're gonna focus right here. So we at least get some sort of uh, air base. We have to get an air base. Uh, that's Recognize Republic. Thank you very much. You can do that other stuff, but we don't need to. Let's see. Give them our arms. Republic of India and our money. Another constraint of the Republic of India faces is a dearth of both capital and the means to get, generate such. Ramp tax evasion, nurtured by an antiquated Byzantine codex of regulations, hampered New Delhi's industrialization programs with an ever present shortfall of money. These factors lock the economy under a perpetual stagnating cycle between a lack of cash for building factories and a lack of factories for making cash. Fortunately, both American investments and America's factories are willing to cross two oceans for India's relief. All India is President Nixon's fountain pen and, of course, some incentives from the country's ample reserves. Change of management. Will self just return from the front lines to find the GMA's temporary HQ even more of a mess than the Rex Commissar's poor excuse for an army? Guard in the meeting were two boys, barely 17, with the ill-fitting uniforms. Stop the thought they looked ridiculous. Although they saluted him, the mismatching uniforms and probably dysfunctional guns they showed off while guarding the two columns of the, to, on the entrance of the building made him almost a parody of military discipline. It was only after he went in that he realized that one of them had a French Adrian helmet instead of a German model. He shook his head. Can't get any worse than this. However, Stoff soon found out he was wrong. Walking into the meeting, he found the GMA Council in absolute panic. Willem, where the heck have you been? Horace von Uppenfeld's voice traveled across the room and hit Soft quite suddenly. After composing himself, Soft responded with the obvious. Murray sent me to organize an army, Horace, didn't he tell you? The assembled leadership of the colony looked at him as if he claimed a, a Martian ancestry. Murray says, God, he's vanished. A cold sweat struck Soft that moment. As they, if they couldn't offer the Rex Commissar to the rebels, their voice or his booty would be on the line. No sooner had Soft joined the bickering GMA colleagues in discussion what to do than the conscript with Adrian Helmet rushed in, handing over a known left. Von Oppenfeld had to read it out loud to believe it. This is Admiral Moore of the OFN's Indian Ocean Command. Rex Commissar Maurice is under our protection. We will extend such protection to you should you agree to the establishment of an OFN mandate over the island. By the format, all men know it was a telegraph trans transcription, probably from a warship. In other words, it was real. Well, I always hated the Reich anyways. An OFN mandate will be temporarily put in place to serve as a transition between the German rule and local sovereignty. Oh, and this changes. Nice. Oh, Madagascar government, look at that. German sabotage efforts. Well, that ain't good. Attack and defense. Uh, Japanese sabotage efforts. Oh, boy. And, of course, it advisors from us, which is beautiful. Wondrous. Amazing. Economy still hopefully doing okay. We're not quite out of 62 yet, which does suck, but whatever. I'd love to be able to fight here. But these guys probably would do pretty well against us. No? Okay. There we go. That's what we like to see. Only 20. Are you kidding me, man? Uh, they have any plans? I can't tell. Also, I do apologize for my mispronunciations of words and such. Um, I've been slurring my words pretty darn badly. I, I can tell, so. I do apologize for that. There you go. This really is not much at all, but whatever. We'll take whatever we can get right now. Honestly, if you take that, can you just go into here and there? That'd be great if you could. Great success, success. Anything down here. Makes sense, Jimmy's Magadon. There you go. No. It's generally dominant. Well, uh, there you go. I don't think the Jim's gonna really do much over there, but that's fine with us. Oh, hello. Nice, very nice. And can we go to land auction? What is this? Yes, there we go. Get it, get it, get it. Come on, championship game. We're going to put that. Please go ahead. Hey, not bad. Bulgaria sides with them, which is fine. Doesn't matter to us too much. Less than ninety billion in debt. Pretty good. Um, honestly, I, I kind of just want to beat you up to see if we can. Now, hold. I don't actually want to take the tile. I want these guys to move first. I see if we can just go right on in. Oh, I already just kill them off as well. Alabama's champion. Maybe you want to that? Please grab it. Oh, his middle name is Corley, huh? 
Times Magazine, 1962. I think I read this one before. But if you want to read this, please go right ahead. Oh, that's not good. Opera Success. I always thought it was bigger, The Traveling Lady. If you want to read this one, please go ahead. Nice. Oh, we made more divisions. That's good, actually. Just in case. Just in case we lose them. And that's going to cost us a little bit more, but whatever. 2.4% growth. Not bad. Pretty good. Pretty decent, I'd say. So far. Um, I really don't want to leave this area, because we really need to keep it. You should be okay if you just hold. Just hold. Don't, don't worry about attacking. But don't let these guys move in. Come on. Come on. Oh, they threw in some helicopters themselves. That sucks. You got cut off. God dang it, you ding-dongs. Uh, John Glenn wins. You ready about that? Please go ahead. Well, at least we'll get the port done. John, God bless J JFK. If you ready about this, please go ahead as well. Yay, Harry for Kennedy. Yay. Let's just move around for a little bit. Recognize the Republic of India. Flash. As President of the United States, my unrecognized excellently Vijaya Lakshmi Pandit Flash. As Ambassador Extraordinary and Plenipotentiary, Plenipotentiary of the Republic of India to the U.S. of A. Flash. Nehru's sister, Marty Leidenhandler, thought, well, heck of a guy. Heck of a pick. Marty had only gotten the call an hour ago. The White House had wanted a photographer on hand for the historic moment. They had figured out that he was unlikely to leak anything until after the credeling of cred... Oh my goodness. Credit detailing ceremony. I apologize for my mispronunciations. I cannot speak today. President Nixon and Ambassador Panda picked up the binder of credentials and held them between them, smiling gamely at that classic diplomatic style flash. What a going now picture was like in the Tokyo Foreign Office right now. The former recognition of the Republic over the Japanese puppets in Azad Hind would surely draw plenty of ire. Then again, he thought it's not like tensions weren't high already. How bad could it be? So the Calcutta and representative is online. He sounds pretty mad. And her money. Give him our arms. As it stands, the West Indian arms industry remains a white paper held by some nondescript official from the Republic's Ministry of Defense. And the well established armed companies operating under the jurisdiction of West Indian relied on imports from a coterie of foreign contractors to fulfill their armed forces' needs. Admittedly, such an arrangement suits a country facing neither insurgency nor invasion, a state of affairs which can reverse overnight at Calcutta's immediate behest. In contrast, American gunsmiths sell guns and ammo by the millions even within its own market. These companies are incidentally all too happy to serve as another and more formal basis. The White House is, of course, also. All too eager to oblige both parties' needs. Most no important thing is to free those guys up there, so. Good. Now I come back down. Please, Paraguay, that's fine. We'll, we'll get these guys out. That's fine. Antananarivo. Oh, what do we have over here? Anything else? Nope. Alright, over here. Happy January, everybody. Oh, where are you guys going? Not bad. Go in there if you can. Go in there if you can. Two divisions, eh? We just gotta keep them in place. Keep them in place. And we can deal with these guys in the south next. What else we got here? Anything else? Any logistics? I'm gonna keep the PP. We gotta keep it. Happy February, everybody. Hope you're having a great year. I know this video is going to be kind of long, but, you know, with the first episode, I mean, a lot of stuff we've seen before, so I just want to kind of push through it. And, yeah. That's how I kind of operate. Better tanks, 60... Well, we're not really using tanks too much. How about helicopters? anti sub stuff. I'm not really worried about that too much. And any coverage, some bombing. Nah. Do we have any more... I can't send any more plans. God dang it. Toolbox. Ha, <laughs> toolbox theory. Oh. Oh, you TNO devs. Star of the Beast, the magnum opus of Professor George F. Kennan, James Burnham, and the former Secretary of State, Dean Ackerson, has landed with a splash within the circles of foreign policy. The product of years of correspondence, debate, and discussion is so at once a scathing rebuke of isolationism and defense of interventionism, and a blueprint for American foreign policy. Articulating Kennan and Burnham's proposed toolbox theory, the professors call for the U.S. and its allies to pursue a total war without a war, aiming to contain and starve the German and Japanese empires by utilizing every tool in America's toolbox to aggressively contest fascism, whether it be through proxy conflict in the battlefields, or the Third World War, or via economic, economical, or technological and t diplomatic means. Having been guided for over a decade by the hands of Dulles brothers and twin monsters of Roback and Fortress of America, the death of John Foster Dulles and the inauguration of the Nixon administration has created an opening for new theorists and policies in the State Department, an opening that is eagerly being filled. 
Whether a readership encompassing prime ministers, dignitaries, and even the president of the U.S., only tell them how this new toolbox zero will affect foreign policy, or policy in general, and strategy as the U.S. grapples with enemies, enemies the world over. How long did it take him again? It took him way too long, in my opinion, but you know what? The reward for waiting? Not bad. Are you done? Yeah, no, you're not. Go in. There you go. And I want you guys to actually come down here. Do not lose the capital. Good. You gotta kill their capital now. You probably can't win. Oh, you actually might be able to win there by yourself, huh? You actually win there by. Oh. You know what? Get us all that more RMXP. That'd be good. Two party system. MVP is growing in its influence and popularity across the nation, increasingly sees a viable alternative to the decades long RD dominance of American politics. Though the MPP is on the rise, it could certainly be made to rise a little higher. For for example, some government resources were sent their way without anyone being the wiser. Alternatively, we can shore up support for the RDs instead. And up that the MPP's rise is nothing more than a passing fad. However, no matter who we choose, we'll have a bigger chance of winning the race of Office in 64. Time for a little bit of change here. Nothing says change like a little progressivism. In any sense of the word. If you want to read about the mystique that is quite feminine, or somewhat feminine, slightly feminine, it might be feminine, I can't tell. Please go right ahead. I want something more than my husband and my children in my home. Tell that to the man. Yeah, well, I'll be right to you, why not? Because we can. Unlimited money for the CIA. Oh, do we win? Hey, we got him. Nice. We struggled there a little bit, but that's alright. Happens. We all struggle. Alright, so that's the case. Oh, go up to 60. Let's go up to... Not that high, but... 25. It gives him an odd number going. So 25, 35. There you go. And boom. Even stronger. I love it. I love it a lot. A little bit of struggle never hurt. Invest in India. New expansions of dockyards at Kandila. Financed by Wells Fargo Bank and TAA, or TIAA. Black furnaces, blast furnaces, courtesy of engineers from Bethlehem Steel to kick start a new iron industry in Karnataka. Agreements from companies such as Fruit of the Loom, Woolrich, and Brooks Brothers to source more cotton from fields in Gujarat and Andhra Pradesh. All these developments and more failing financial papers across the country. It seems that every American company with enough capital is putting up money into Indian projects. The city of U.S. Indian relations is at an all time high, and as a result, investors see incredible opportunities in the Republic. And you'll get new jobs and boosted incomes, while American companies will reap new profits, and American consumers will be able to buy new cheap goods. That's a win win. Tell me more about these mythical investments in India. Sort of something beautiful. The monsoons had charted the course of Indian civilization from since time immemorial. Their presence brought plenty to Rajas and tide sweeping defeat upon their foes. Their absence brought famine and destitution. Indiscriminate. Likewise, Indian strongholds, the strongest cyclone to care, date, carries with it the howls of war and winds of war. No longer distant hypothetical, but now an oncoming certainty heralding its approach with thunder and rain. Upon Washington's request, the Army Corps of Engineers began constructing a stretch of border fortifications from the Bay of Bengal to the Himalayas, dubbing the Bamboo Curtain. Every block and sandbag laid onto its foundation represents a risky, no less genuine investment towards the free India's future. And at the same time, President Nixon hopes where one America has placed by its side as its trusted friend. So you just win here. I'm kind of inclined to believe you, but we'll see. Look at that lad. Happy March, everybody. New month, new us, new times. We got them German tanks and circles there too. Beautiful. Looking good. 87 billion. 3% growth. Oh, yes, please. Operational success. Report on Hitler. If you want to buy Mr. Hitler, please go right ahead. He's a swell dude, some might say. I'm not sure if I'd say that myself, but you know, you never know. Uh, there you go too, and then um, there you go. Understated, understood. I mean, that might be a different reading. I can't tell sometimes, man. I really can't. Actually, if anything, I want you guys to go here. There you go. Ball's doing a great job. Absolutely great. Air assault, I love it. Skirmisher, probing attack. Uh, Rhode Island under blue banners. Oh, we won. It almost felt like a crime to strike a match, but Moore did so anyways. He struck that line and brought it to the end of the cigars, pulling smoke down and throwing it into his lungs. He didn't know if his eyes were watering from the smoke or the landscape that was currently viewing. All along the ridge line was a desolate forest. Some of the trees smoldered away, blackened husks of a torched land, some merely had scorched marks across the trunks, almost devoid of the smaller branches. He couldn't see a patch of green in the entirety of the forest, nor the villages that dwelt by the base of the forest, though his houses out of the same treatment only somehow worse. Moore knew that he had played his role in the devastation. He caused the war in this country to go from bad to worse. As the nation fought the native government, the natives, what well, justice was there in that? 
A grim-faced officer approached Moore from the streams of trucks descending the dirt road, flowing through the Ashton village like a river. Admiral Moore, Commander Alfred is on the line for you. The Admiral followed his junior officer away from the village, leaving his thoughts behind. They didn't do to him any good now. He could leave those for his journal. Perhaps a memoir of some sort. The man led him through the barracks, mostly abandoned his side for the medical station. The men who defended this area all packed up in the trucks that had departed moments ago, but that medical bay would still be in action for a long time. As he walked by the bay, he caught a glimpse of a child no older than eight. His forearms covered in a bandage, soaking, soaked with blood. He clung to the doctor in front of him, sobbing in his arm. It didn't matter what the circumstances led to this moment. Let bygones be bygones, more or thought. This is real. He would do whatever it would take to mend the shitty uh, situation, no matter how or slow or minuscule his efforts might be. Call him after the storm. Nice. Nice. Beautiful, my friends. We got him. No national focus there, but that's okay. Malagasy Crossroads. As war ended, lost pockets of resistance were dealt with, and the necessity for an ad military administration was raised into question. We successfully not only tore open a Rax Commissariat from the German sphere, but simply put, we now need to decide which path to put Mass Gascar in. William Strauss connections will make the transition toward government seamless. Hans Joachim Schopp's distance from the old government is a sufficient middle ground. Jacques Rabamananjada will be a great gesture of goodwill towards the native of, of Malagasy. Can I ask her to be returned? From one government to the next. Thank you for joining the OFN! Organization Free Nations. Iron Eye Spectre over here, of course. Iron Eye Spectre looking pretty, pretty fearsome. With Burgundy still in the Iron Eye Spectre, which is weird, but yeah, it makes sense, I guess. England, um, Russia, there's them over there. Reformation both mine and state. It was nice to feel as if he was found on the right side of history. He could reminisce on the seemingly decades of simple politicking, all to acquire a large paycheck and a larger degree of safety in his career. Finally, he had secured. Something actually valuable. A position of power in a legal democratic OFN directed government. Stolf stood out from the balcony of his two floor apartment. The city he lived through and fought for and seemingly rebounded from the days of the ancient bubonic plague, and life had finally begun to return to the streets of the city. This was his home now, not Germany. He had been labeled a traitor and sent away to the far side of the world, but all that didn't matter now. He could walk the streets without noticing the fear of the population had under or had of his dark gray uniform, but how they silently slunk away from his gaze, never ever making eye contact. The few words they said were quick, filled with stutters, and full of apologies for any perceived minor misdemeanor. Now, he could talk and laugh and joke with the people he now finally represented. He could sit almost amongst them in the restaurants and bars, and sit beside them, and cars and planes. It was all more than he wished for all those years ago when he was first flown down to Madagascar, and now it was only just the beginning, he thought to himself. Still maintaining his gaze over the ever-darkening city, co coated in shadows as a consequence of the setting sun. He knew the land, the people that lived on it, and the customs they abided by, a skill that vast majority of the OFN's administrators did not possess. It wouldn't be hard for stuff to climb the ranks to help reform the society that had for so long been trampled by the heavy steel cap boot of the German Rackus Commissariat. It was also a boon that he was never officially connected to email Maurice, Saul thought, as he made for his kitchen table. Whatever came to him out of sight, out of mind after all, then just as finally addressed. 3.2% growth, not bad. Inflation is actually a little lower too. Not bad. Just don't invest in research, that's all. Down in the Indies. One would think that being the ambassador of the West Indies would be a prize posting within the ranks of the State Department and covered assignment to the sunny shores of the Caribbean. Do Robert Graham Minor. He had one of the most unevenable positions of any statesman and service of the United States of America. A maritime dispute, huh? Fish, huh? Uh-huh. Small lagoon. Uh, yeah, yeah, where's this again? Uh, St. Martin. Ma Martin. Okay, whatever it is. Okay. And they can't handle this themselves? They're calling me there because the Fed are... Oh, crap. Why does... Oh, right, right. I'll, I'll charter a boat later. Yeah, goodbye. Goodbye. Putting down the telephone with a look of disdain, the ambassador extraordinarily and plenipotentiary to the West and his Federation nurse at his temple. It seemed like every other week he'd begin a phone call to mediate a dispute between the Federation's member states, local authorities squabbling over resource rights land, and in this case, maritime boundaries. As Miner, or Meneer, eye the bottle of Jamaican rum on the shelf, he found himself forced to wonder if this predecessor's resignation had less to do with a post dull shake of the State Department, rather than but rather the sheer difficulty of dealing with the confused amalgamation of colonies from three empires lacking any sort of a <laughs> ring ring so well know about yes yeah, so this is a, a robert minor uh, ambassador yeah yeah wait a dispute over what yeah yeah i'll be sure to look at the matter we'll be there less traffic paradise more traffic uh, paradox uh, box of oh, crap do will remember me now this one's good to do Despite being a place that most people would find enviable, namely on the beautiful archipelago of the Florida Keys, USA, Emil Maurice was not really feeling alright. He got what he wanted, yes, but now he's in what we would call a de facto state of house arrest, and being unable to leave this house as he pleased. And while the weather was better in this setting, decidedly less Nazi infested than that of Madagascar, the situation hadn't really improved, had it? Thinking about it, what he had accomplished? He only betrayed his friend Adolf Hitler, who once protected him from certain death. He betrayed his nation Germany and sold out to what used to be his sworn enemy, and most importantly, he had left his family behind. Where were they now? Maurice didn't want to think about. They were probably dead or worse, but what that was a price for his own safety. Would Adolf approve of where he was now? 
Uh, probably not, but that didn't matter anymore. And now he stood alone in a house far away from everything he knew. He was there with no friends, family, acquaintances even. He was there with nothing, nothing except the letter. A proposition for an interview sent by an American journalist whose name vaguely rang a bell was right there on Emil's desk. He'd almost forgotten about it, having been lost in his own thoughts, but thinking about how alone he was made him remember that someone out there would still want to know what he was up to. All right, then the former ex of thought as he took out his pen. If only the, the only way for him to become part of history was to raise the atrocities he'd been complicit in, then so be it. Something's better left unspoken. If people want to know, they'll know everything. 3.2% growth. More, 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 more. More. Cut it down, cut it down. Dead interest is not bad either. Cut it down. And what are we building here? Prisons? All right. Guantanamo Bay? Oh, that is too good. Surfing USA, a smash hit. And if you like to read about that, please go right ahead. Nice. Army base in New Hampshire. I always forget where New Hampshire is at. Always. Forget. Not bad. We're only four of these, so just keep going with all that stuff for now. Increase unity? No, sir. I got plenty of expertise for that. That's fine. Understood. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Trial of the century. It was late in the Daniels household, far too late. Sonny's knickknacks glinted in the light of the TV screen. His portraits of George Patton, Strom Thurmond, and JFK floated ghost like from their spaces on the wall. His children sat there on the couch in a state half between sleep and consciousness, kept awake only by the father's excited energy. He was doing the right thing, he told himself, by keeping them awake after all. When would they have the chance to see history again? When would there be something like this fantastic coming out of Australia? And Mel Maurice, the TV sputtered. Sonny leaned forward, his eyes fixed on the man cloaked in dark robes and static. On either side of him were symbols of justice and authority, the emblem of the OFN, flags of its member countries. The flag of the U.S. loomed its largest. For a role in Madagascar, military tribunal, I have found that I judged you guilty of war crimes, crimes against humanity, membership in an organization declared criminal. The charge went on as Sonny clapped his hands together and cheered. Startling his children, he watched on as the camera switched perspective to a pathetic man in gray prisoner's robes. He watched as the camera focused on his hollow gaunt face. He watched as the man choked back tears and began to mouth something almost made almost indecipherable by the pulse signal. You promised, said the man, repeating a lie that had become all too familiar over the course of the trial. I did everything I was supposed to, they said, if I helped. But the judges showed no sign of caring, just as they had in the weeks of testimony that preceded it. The court had wheeled out witness after witness, describing the Nazi sins, how he had sought out his position in Madagascar and orchestrated every atrocity. The prosecution had even shown lurid pictures of the man and Hitler together, pictures that inspired jeering and disgust from the trial of supposedly impartial overseers. Not that it mattered to Sonny whether the trial was fair or not, he was just glad to see America fighting the brown shirts. With all exhaustion now gone, the Daniels family now watched as the lead judge looked down at this quivering defendant. For you said crim crimes. For you, or said crimes in which you have been and now stand convicted, Miller Tribunal, and I sentence you, Miller Maurice, to death by hanging. May God have mercy on your soul, and good riddance, cracking the steel curtain. In the words aftermath, Germania drew a line hugging the stretch of Europe's coast between Norway's fjords and the Strait of Gibraltar, alongside its length. Strong, a, a string of watchtowers, seawalls, and concertina. Why? Their seams held together only by trillions of rocks marks in the Fuhrer's Aryan will. The string hold over the old world goes by deceptive names like the Einheit's Pact and Fortress of Europe, but the free world calls what it is a steel curtain. The books all would believe that the steel curtain is as the Gibraltar Dam, impregnable, insurmountable, or everlasting. In truth, the curtain is pregnant with rods, surmounted by the power struggles and fell on his deathbed, much like its architect Hitler. Sort of blows can be made gaps out of its rustiest sections, where liberty's torch like can filter back into the cotton, continent afresh. Not bad. A man, manly without a plan. Or with a plan. Ah, oh, Prime Minister Manley, what can I do for you today? Minner responded with more cheers than he felt. And ever since the Guiana debacle, it seemed the disputes in the West Indies had only gotten worse as the locals attempted to take advantage of America's seemingly seeming weakness. And Maz, it's good to hear from you, Cam Jamaican PM's accent of voice. Given recent events, I wasn't sure you'd be available. Well, yes, I've certainly been busy for a few months, but I trust that this isn't a mere courtesy call. What do you wish to discuss, Prime Minister? Manley, for his part, cut right to the chase. Ambassador, as you are familiar by this point, the West Indies Federation is not what you would call the most stable of nations, having bounced from one crisis to another ever since its formation in the aftermath of the war. Your point, Prime Minister, as your President Lincoln once said, House divided itself cannot stand. The Federation cannot continue its, in its present state. What I'm proposing is a plan to call the Constitutional Convention to strengthen the Federation's foundation and ensure success. There's a brief silence as my inner ruled over the idea. Prince, Prime Minister, I need no convincing the Federation's dysfunction, but how would I convince Washington of its merits of your plan? After all, nothing would be off the table at the convention. I wouldn't worry about his relations with the U.S., Manley began. We're all aware of the threat posed by the fascists in both oceans, and a stable island would be much more preferable to the one in the constant state of crisis, wouldn't it? Secondly, after the intervention in Guiana, the U.S. has been suffering from a surfeit of what your people call bad publicity. A convention would do much to allay local concerns about the continued influence of the Colossus of the North. Minera had to admit, Manly had a point, and all he had to do now was to persuade D.C. You can miss me, Prime Minister, and hopefully Washington as well. Nice. A burglary in Washington? Oh, boy. If you'd like to read about that, please go right ahead. Uh, that's pretty dominant. Wait. 
It's currently dominant it's still, which is good, 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 good. Anything there? Anything down here? Mm, mm, nope. Anything Middle East? No. Well, intelligence, protect ourselves here anyways, because we can. Thank you very much. And yeah, we'll see what we can do. Artillery barrage. Very good. Very, very nice. Oh, it's still pause. Happy April. 2.8% growth. Not as much as 3, but whatever. We gotta get up, what was it? 342 billion, I think, which is not bad. Inflation went up, then going back down. Uh, 86 billion is not bad. Oh! Well. Things are heating up, anyways. Holy crap. Can send volunteers yet? N oh, we have no interest to. No reason to intervene. Uh. Are you sure? Scottish Open? Uh, I think I read this one before as well. Palmer Place in what place? If you want to read that, please go ahead. Nice. Uh, the morale lowers. Okay, so we'll come back up here. Um. Uh. 30 days have passed. Send a volunteer division. Send the flying tigers. Escalate the war. Alienate the hooks in the front north. Preventing us from engaging any future potential co cooperation with them. Huh. Well, that would kind of suck. Chaos okay, of the Convention Day. Patrick Buchanan, Buchanan Hepburn was an inexpressive man. One of many British exiles spread throughout the former territories of the British Empire. To Minera, he was the perfect man to oversee the West Indies Constitutional Convention. Order! The Convention of the Federation of the West Indies is called to order. The clerk will now read the resolution under debate. A practice voice rang out, resolved that the Federation of the West Indies recognized as the right of all citizens, including a linguistic minority population of a member nation. A few scattered shouts of approval from the French and Dutch delegations required it. The resolution has been raised, though. And so went resolution on language, trade, and law moving uh, relatively smoothly through the convention. Monica counted himself lucky that the Trinidad PM had been seen fit to go through with him before trying to get the Air Force to vacate uh, Chaguaramas, as if the DoD would agree to downsize anything near the canal. Through an upper house divided equally between the Federation's member states, there was a brief silence before the chamber erupted into chaos. Minor grace of the delegates clashed amongst themselves. Order, order. This uh, chamber will come to order. The Honorable, it took 15 minutes before the Hepburn was able to get the room under control. Another five were to quiet down upper Bustamante to speak. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Speaker. Bustamante Rose, this resolution is nothing less than an insult to the good people of Jamaica, who make, despite making up, I cannot in good conscience support Jamaica's continued membership in the Federation, implore every Jamaican patriot to accompany me and abandon this failed enterprise. Minor wince as he watched Bustamante and the members of the Jamaican Labor Party vacate the convention. He nursed a headache and couldn't help but ponder how in the world is the Federation still standing? A natural union with our dreams of unity? Holy crap. Well, that's not good for us right here, right now. Uh, oh, Santa the Flying Tigers. Yeah, I could probably do that one. Opera success. Good, good, good. Um, is there anything we can do in the east here? No? Okay. Can't protect American settlements. Anything there? We would have done a lot that we can already, so. You know, how about Magadan? Why not? Why not? See what we can do. Um. That's that victory in there. All right, well, whatever. Good, good for you, Turkey. Oh. Oh. Wait, what? The oh, the Japanese faction lost. Okay. Was not expecting that. So now what? Um, we shall return. Comprehensive aid package? Mass conscription. I don't want to use, use up army XP or put parts, so we'll leave them that stuff for now? Okay. That was something I was really not expecting. Oh, we get some more growth here, too. I didn't even look at that. Yeah, that is... That, I was not expecting this whatsoever. Tricky dick, what are you up to in the Philippines? Answer the question. Perhaps it was a principle which kept the question firmly behind the grapevine. Much of the Philippine department had lived through the insurrection after all, and for all the faults, none could accuse them of forgetting who the real banditos were. It could have even been fatalism, widespread as it was before the Blitz. The Counts who seem much farther away than Manila, if red and blue both died in one last push regardless, then at least Brass would spare themselves from shelling out a clear-cut answer. Whatever the case, said Brass, had deferred it so often it became a sardonic in-joke among the grunts. Step on a landmine, then answer the question. Outlast a tank in a knife fight, then answer. The question. Raise old glory over Manila Bay, and then answer the question. They aged about as one expects uh, when Manila did fall. This time, Turok asked for a punchline himself, with 
The thinly veiled ultimatum looming over their heads. The brightest minds of the Commonwealth brought the question out of the grapevine into the 18th floor of the Manila Hotel. Predictably. <clears throat> Personalities clash, egos butt heads, and the principal wage war and pragmatism from sunrise to sundown within the Pentwall's house. Oh, Pentwall, Pent house's walls. O only point of reminders of the Commonwealth's precarious situation and many a shattered cup of coffee prevent escalation beyond repair. Nevertheless, the men assembled were still men of flesh and blood. Their throats grew sore with every shouting match, and every shouting match returned sap strength and will, be the, and will the longer they unraveled. In the end, old man Frederick himself broke the deadlock by saying, Tell Tuck our lines holds. Tell Tuck he can take his reds back to the jungle. Ooh. Um, you know what else you guys said? Should we do the Tell Taruk our lines holds? Or should we tell Taruk he can take his reds back to the jungle? But if you enjoyed this long first episode of us playing as America, going towards and reaching for the stars someday, please leave a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below, and I will see you tomorrow. Once we continue cutting down the debt, and growing our economy, and seeing what else and other troubles we can get ourselves involved in. Thanks for watching. Have a great, great, great rest of your day.